FSN Midwest has a big football matchup tonight. State bragging rights go up for grabs when the Western Illinois Leathernecks hit the field to take on the Salukis of Southern Illinois. Tonight on FSN Midwest. A glorious afternoon for football here in Carbondale, Illinois. It is homecoming, autumn weather, and the Salukis are perfect this season. They'll play host to the Western Illinois Leathernecks. It's gateway football from McAndrew Stadium. Dane and Hughes alongside of Dan McLaughlin. Delighted to have you with us, and the Salukis are perfect this season. They're 4-0, ranked number nine in the country. This was supposed to be a team that was having a down year. That's not the case. It's definitely not the case. Coach Kill has this team working on all cylinders. They're doing an excellent job on offense, very balanced, and with a very stingy defense, and that's why they're standing where they are right now. Western Illinois is 3-2. and two. They come on the road, and they've got Steve LaFalse, their quarterback, that leads the way. Steve LaFalse has done an excellent job leading this team. They are averaging over 35 points per game, and it's mostly because of him and Donaldson in the backfield. He does a great job getting the ball out of his hands and getting the ball into his playmaker's hands as well. The sophomore Herb Donaldson is the uh, premier tailback. First time that he's been the featured guy back there. Yes, and he's taking that the reins wholeheartedly. He's done a great job. He has eight touchdowns this year, and he leads the league, and he's done a great job as a workhorse on this offense. A big guy, strong guy that does an excellent job slashing and running over people. Now, Southern Illinois can really run the football. They've got an All-American back there and Arky Whitlock. We'll talk about him in a moment, but uh, leading the way, you got to have that big fullback, that bruiser, and they've got it in J.T. Wise. Well, it's definitely a thunder and lightning type of atmosphere in that backfield. J.T. Wise does an excellent job not only opening holes for Arky, but he can carry the ball as well. Almost five yards per carry for himself at the fullback position, so they're going to lean on both of those guys in the backfield to get some big yardage. He is the All-American candidate. That's Arky Whitlock. Arky Whitlock, what can you say more about him? He's, he's touching about 3,000 yards in total offense, 4,000 yards in all-purpose yards. He does an excellent job. The main thing about him, he doesn't cough up the ball. Homecoming weekend at Southern Illinois. A perfect, and I mean perfect, afternoon for football. Big crowd on hand. We'll kick it off when we come back. McAndrew Stadium on the campus of Southern Illinois. It's homecoming weekend, and it's the Salukis taking on Western Illinois. Dane and Hughes, Dan McLaughlin with you. We meet the coaches as both teams taking a look at each other in a conference that obviously preaches good sportsmanship, and that's what they do before every game. Meet and greet before the kickoff. 53 and 33, the record at Western Illinois. Don Patterson, and I know Dana, and you know him very well. Yes, I do. Don Patterson and I go way back to the late 80s, early 90s, and in our Iowa days under Coach Hayden Fry. Jerry Kill became the school's all-time leader here at Carbondale. When Southern Illinois handed Indiana State its 22nd straight loss, that was back on September 30th, he improved his record to 38-26 in a little over six years in restoring this program, and he's done a wonderful job. We have a third member of our crew. That's Scott Warman. He's down on the field. Let's check in. All right, thanks, Danny. Appreciate it very much. You know, it'll be interesting to see how this game gets started. Western Illinois, Southern Illinois, two very high potent offenses. Western Illinois will start on the defensive end. They aren't known for their defense, but in their first five games this year, Dan, They've scored first. In fact, on their first possession, four of those five games, they've scored first. So it'll be interesting to see how their defense musters up against SIU's high-powered offense. Thank Dan. you, Scott. Southern Illinois looks to post its fifth straight win against Western Illinois. The Leathernecks at one time won a league record 18 straight games against the Dogs. 33-14-4 and four in the series lead. Western Illinois' 33 wins are the most of any Gateway Conference opponent against Southern Illinois. So this is a big, big game for Western Illinois. They're three and two. Southern Illinois, number nine in the country. They're perfect at four and zero. Oh. And for Jerry Kill, it is homecoming weekend, and this is one of the teams, like we said during our open, Dana, that uh, was supposed to be down this year, but obviously they're not, and they are considered one of the top teams in the country. Yeah, they are very strong. And what I like about this team is the balance that they provide on the offensive side of the ball with their running attack and the passing attack. They just keep things pretty even keeled across the board. And they don't make any mistakes, and on the defense side they're just a very stingy defense don't give up too much our key Whitlock along with Craig Turner back deep to receive for Southern Illinois 
Taylor Rowan. A sophomore will kick it off for the Leathernecks, and we're just about set to go. The kick is away. It's short, and it'll be taken at about the 18-yard line. Good field position to start this ball game for Southern Illinois. They'll have it on their 36-yard line, first and 10. Great job securing the ball and just getting upfield and getting right up to towards the 30, 36 yard line, but it's a short kick into the wind. It's pretty windy out here today, so we'll we'll see how that passing attack by Western Illinois will do, but that defense is gonna have to start up against this SIU offense first. There's a look at Nick Hill, a lefty, 6'3, 205 pound junior. 82 straight pass attempts with no INTs. He's from DeCoin, Illinois, not too far away from Carbondale. And it's the first possession of our football game for Southern Illinois. Whitlock gets the call. Sidesteps one tackler across the 36-yard line, the original line of scrimmage. Picks up two and let's meet the offense for Southern Illinois. And it is a very good one. And up front, it's Marquez and Lockwood, Justice, Smith, and Kearns. They have been together for a long time. We highlight number 24. That's Arkey Whitlock, the All-American candidate, closing in on over 4,500 yards of total offense throughout his career. Just a terrific career for Whitlock. Out of the shotgun now will be Nick Hill. Rolling to his right. Looking still to throw across his body. And the catch is made by the big tight end. That's Brandon Jones. A 6'4 senior out of Harrisburg, Illinois. And here's a great job by Nick Hill going away from his throwing hand to, to his right hand side and throwing across his body. Now, it's probably an ill-advised throw by most coaches to throw across your body back across the flow, but they connected with the big tight end who is averaging about 26 yards per catch this year. He's a big weapon on their passing game as well. A flag on the play. And that's going to go against the Leathernecks. Now, Brandon Jones, an interesting story, the tight end who just made the catch. He was granted a sixth year of eligibility, and he played linebacker for a couple years at Northwestern. So he played Division I at Northwestern and now plays Division I AA. Penley will be attached to the end of the run. First down. So he goes from the defensive side of the football to now playing offense and uh, making plays happen, catching the football, and he's been a good one the last couple of years. Well, he's a huge target, and he has great hands out there. So I tell you what, it's a, it's a great asset for him to come from the defensive side to play that tight end position. You know exactly where the holes are. You know the mindset of the linebackers. A roughing the passer call. Now the ball rests on the 33-yard line for Southern Illinois. It's Whitlock. Well, he'll just wait and then pick his holes, and he picks up about five, maybe six on the play. Yes, he does a great job being patient in the backfield. A lot of people think you need to hit the play hard, but sometimes you need to be a little bit patient, let your blocks uh, kind of get created. Leathernecks defense, Townsend, Schultz, and Boone. Linebacking core, very good. Jason Williams, who wears number six, leads the way out of that core. And the uh, secondary as well for Western Illinois. Have a lot of young guys on this Western Illinois defense. Pickup of eight on that last play. Whitlock again to the right side, strung out near a first down. It'll be close. And the tackle by Jerome Bennett, a 6'1", 235-pound junior, linebacker out of Southfield, Michigan. Jerome Bennett will be all over the field today. He's a sideline to sideline type of linebacker that they expect big plays from in this Western Illinois defense. He was part of the all newcomer team a year ago inside the Gateway Conference. It's a first down in that last play, so first and 10 for the Salukis and a good drive early on with the ball resting now on the 22. Hill hands it off to JT Wise and the fullback picks up maybe one a couple on the play. And he's wrestled down near the 20-yard line. That's the type of running back you want to have in the backfield, that one-two punch that you can punish these guys early in the game, and it just opens up a, a, a daylight later in the game. That's the type of running back you have when you have those big guys is you bruise them, bruise them, bruise them in the beginning of the game, and then things just kind of open up at, in the fourth quarter, and that's when you get your big games. JT, a big kid, 6'1", 230-pounder. Senior from Farmersville, Illinois. Pickup of two on the last play. Second down and eight for Southern Illinois. This is Hill with play action. Looking to throw. Has time. Goes end zone. It's up. It's tipped. 
and it's incomplete. The intended receiver was Alan Turner, his uh, top receiver this season, and Fuad Khalil on the coverage. Good play by Mr. Khalil out of Columbia, Missouri. Well, Alan Turner is a big target, and this is a perfectly thrown ball. Just a great job by the defensive back, Khalil, getting one hand on it, reading that corner route. Maybe you want to lead him a little bit further to the corner, but it's kind of tight when you get into the end zone. But that's just a great defensive play by the Western Illinois defensive back. Wooder checks in for the Lennox defensively. Third down and eight for Southern Illinois. Shotgun here for Nick Hill. Hill with time now steps up. He's going to run for it to the 15, down to the 10. He picks up the first down. It'll be first and goal for Southern Illinois. Great job See, taking advantage of what you can do. And that's that's the epitome of Nick Hill back there. He doesn't throw the ball away. He doesn't give the ball away. He finds exactly what he can take advantage of against every defense that he faces and makes positive yardage right here, getting the first down key in the gold zone. Gain of 12 on the play. That was just the 29th time that Hill has run the football, but he already has five rushing touchdowns this year. First and goal from the seven. Whitlock dancing his way across the five, and he's brought down. Host of tacklers for Western Illinois. And in there again was Bennett. And that's what you want to have from this Western Illinois defense. You want to have these guys that are stuffing the middle and making him pause. And if he can pause a little bit longer, you, you give your linebackers, Bennett and Williams, an opportunity to get in there and corral him. So you don't want to, you want to bend but don't break in this type of defense, but you don't want to give up points, a whole bunch of points like they did last week against Western Kentucky. Second and goal from the five for Nick Hill. Man in motion. That's Jones, a tight end. Pitch to Whitlock. Flag on the play. This is one tackler. Dives and he gets in. But will he be called back? They're going to say that's against Southern Illinois. Looks like right in the area of a holding call. It'll be unfortunate for Southern Illinois. They've done a great job during this drive so far. Illegal formation on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat second down. So be second and goal now from the 10. And let's take a look at the replay here. A legal formation on the play, and Whitlock got in for what would have been a touchdown and a score to start this game. That's what you hate to see is, is penalties when you get in the gold zone. And I always refer to the gold zone when you're going in. A lot of people talk about the red zone. To me, it's the gold zone. When you make touchdown as an wide, ex-wide receiver, that's gold right there. They are 20 of 20 inside that zone that you talk about this year. Hill to throw. Flushed out of the pocket, still looking. He'll tuck it, runs out of bounds, picks up maybe one on the play. So big third down coming up. A little bit of extra action out there on the sideline, but it was in inadvertent. And uh, we got the fans out here that are ready to get all over this Western Illinois team. It's Chris Riley that uh, was tangled up over there, that sideline. So third down coming up here. Third and goal from the nine for Southern Illinois in our first possession of this football game. The offense for Southern Illinois, they lead the conference in rushing, scoring, and total offense. It has been a very good unit for Jerry Kill. Hill to throw the football with time. Has a man open and a touchdown for the tight end, Brandon Jones. Great job of execution of a, of a cross play. You had the two tight ends crossing with the wide receiver going across the back of the end zone. And Brandon Jones found himself wide open for the sixth. Third touchdown reception for Brandon Jones this season. And his eighth catch of the season and second already today. And that play starts starts off with the play action in the backfield by Hill and Arkey doing a great job sucking in those linebackers and opening it up. Gateway special teams player of the week, Craig Coffin. 
on for the PAT. And it's seven to nothing, Salukis. As you can see right here, great job, fake run. But as you, but Brandon Jones does an excellent job as he comes across the line of scrimmage. You get caught up in the mix with everybody flowing towards the play action. You can be a tight end that can sneak underneath and become wide open like he did. It's a great execution in the goal zone. Great play calling by the Salukis. Jones uh, granted a six year of eligibility, as I mentioned before, for medical reasons. He had some leg problems and some issues there. He played inside the Big Ten Conference with Northwestern as a linebacker, then transferred to Southern Illinois. And he wanted to, to be part of the offense and catching the football. And that's what he's been doing this year. Big, big target. 6'4", 260 pound senior and he makes it seven to nothing Southern Illinois. Well he's a smart kid because he comes over to the to the glory side of the football and that as a wide receiver obviously we don't think too much of those defensive sides they don't get any glory sometimes they get a little jealous so he's getting a taste of the best of both worlds by coming over to the offense and he's producing as well. You have played for this man coach Patterson how does he react now in the uh, first possession offensively for Western Illinois. Well unfortunately they've, they've become a little bit used to this their, their defense hasn't played as well as they'd like to they've had to score a lot of points uh, especially last week in their loss uh, they had the ball seven times and scored on five of those possessions so he knows that it, he's in for a, a rough day today on his defensive side he knows he has to keep up with them on offense deep deep kick hit out of the end zone. So it's through the end zone. Very close to being a penalty. But uh, they give him it uh, through the end zone. So Western Illinois will have it their first possession of the ball game. Steve LaFalse, a look at his numbers. 61 of 99 this season. He had just a terrific junior season. And one of the best in the history of the school. Started all 11 games last year. The numbers on the false and the first possession now for Western Illinois. Donaldson the tailback and he gets it on the first handoff of the game for Western Illinois. And he picks up a first down. He is a load back there. 5'11", 220 pound sophomore out of St. Louis. And what you see about his running style is at 220 pounds you think you're going to have to break down. He's going to try to drop his shoulder and truck you every time he gets the ball. But he's a slasher as well. He has a good mixture. Let's meet the offense for Western Illinois. Walker and Sweeney, Wickman, Val, and Tobin up front. Backs and receivers, Carl Sims, Thomas, and Payne. Very, very good. Payne is the big fullback when they go to him in front of Donaldson. A lot of times it's just a single man in that backfield. It's Donaldson again, and he gets it across the 40. Another big gain for the Leathernecks. Let's meet the uh, defense for Southern Illinois. They were 13th in rushing defense a year ago, top 20 in the last three years. So this is a very, very good group, and it's anchored by Lorenzo Wims, who plays up front, big number 91. You'll be hearing his name all afternoon long for Southern Illinois. Salukis so lead it, 7 0. Touchdown pass to the tight end, Brandon Jones from Nick Hill. Donaldson again, that's a big, big hole. Offensive line early on, Danon, doing a very nice job. Yeah, they can control the line of scrimmage, and that's what you've seen all season with this Western Illinois team is that they do an excellent job controlling the line of scrimmage and springing opportunities for Donaldson to get downfield. It's going to take more than one guy, as you saw in that last play. It's going to take more than one guy to corral Donaldson today. He's, he's a a very good running back. He's only a sophomore, so he's got a lot of good years ahead of him. For Southern Illinois, it was 10 plays, 54 yards on their first possession, and now driving, it's Western Illinois in their first possession. LaFalse wants to throw, and the catch is made. That's Paul Anderson, a sophomore from Alton, Illinois. And Paul is uh, substituting for Sims today, who didn't make the trip. He had a back injury last week, got knee in the back against Western Kentucky and, and, and really has put himself in a position where he, he can't even, even walk, Coach Patterson talked about. So hopefully they can get him back in the coming weeks, but I think Anderson's going to fill in uh, good for these guys today. Second down and four. The false to hand it off. And that is Alex Douglas, his first carry of the afternoon. 
That's his 28th carry this season. He averages five yards a carry and 46 a game. So Donaldson gets a little breather, and it's Alex Douglas on this carry. Watch this offensive line. That's what you want to have as an offensive line. You want to establish yourself on the other side of the ball. Walker, Sweeney, Wickman, Valley, and Tobin doing an excellent job up front. They've done that all year long. Although they stepped up to challenge today against the Saluki team, they, they look to be able to establish themselves in this one game. Third and one for the Lennox. Donaldson. Driving, looks like he got the first down. Great job ducking your head and just getting the yard as that's needed. You can't break every play. Every play is not going to be a 45, 50 yard run. Sometimes they're just designed to get you the one or two yards you need for the first down. Stopped by Patrick Jordan, outside linebacker for Southern Illinois. And it's a first down. Ball on the 43 of the Salukis. For the Lennonex, a drive that began on their own 20. This Saluki team, this Saluki defense is very solid right up front with the Jordan, I call them the Jordan Twins. Patrick uh, does a great job up front as well, making that last tackle. And the false is brought down. He is set. Chauncey Mixon, a freshman from Mobile, Alabama, the outside linebacker for the Salukis. Great push up front. Getting in the face of LaFalse, and that's what you have to do is kind of collapse the pocket like they did, not give him any opportunity to get out and get some positive yards. On the, on the flip side, you saw Nick Hill able to scramble and get some yards, but that's a better job by this defensive line, kind of closing all the holes and opportunities for LaFalse to get anything. Loss of five, second down and 15. LaFalse from the shotgun now. Sniff it out, but Donaldson still picks up about five on the play. Herb Donaldson brought down again by Chauncey Mixon. So Mixon has been busy early on defensively. And actually, Southern Illinois has this play pretty much stopped. You want to have the running back running sideways, but the big, strong Donaldson is able to still keep his legs pumping and get five yards downfield. Now you put yourself in a third and eight situation, a little bit better than being third and 15. Ball on the 42, crowd comes alive. Homecoming weekend. McAndrew Stadium in Carbondale, Illinois. LaFosse to throw. Sets up a screen right side. And across the 35, and close to a first down, looks like they got it for Western Illinois. Excellent job up front setting up the screen. The this little pump Milton action. The catch, yep. And those linemen getting out there. And at that point, when you're going with the big linemen against those small defensive backs, you just want to get in the way. You don't need to plow anybody. That's all they did. Just slow them down, open up a little bit of a crease so your guy can get through and get the first down. Douglas in the backfield with Donaldson on the sidelines. First down on that play. First and ten. Man in motion. Swarzynski. Russell down is da uh, Alex Douglas again near the 30 yard line and the stop was made by Larry Luster. 6'1", 305 pound junior, Mr. Wow. Luster. I tell you what, it's very rare for big guys like that to make a lot of tackles. Most of the time you have those defensive tackles in there just to take up blocks. One and two and three guys just to hold on to those blocks and allow the Jordans to get into the backfield and make the plays as linebackers. But on that play, he did an excellent job shedding his block and making the tackle at the same time. Second and nine, a blitz. They pick it up across the middle and the coverage is there. Knocked away by Brandon Jordan. Middle linebacker who leads her team in tackles. Good job by Brandon Jordan. When you know that the blitz is coming, you know your quarterback has to get rid of the ball quickly so you can jump those short routes. And Brandon Jordan did a great job right there getting that hand behind him and not grabbing the, the backside of the tight end for any kind of pass interference. The false is two for three in passing on this drive for 17 yards. Brings up another third down. It's third and nine with the ball resting on the 30 of the Salukis. And timeout taken here by LaFalse. 
And we'll step aside with 4.50 to play in our first quarter. It's homecoming here at McAndrews Stadium in Carbondale. Here's a look at the Sports Network top 25 poll for the week of October 2nd. Illinois State, a record of 3 and 1. They're at number 6. Youngstown State, number 8. And Southern Illinois, undefeated at 4 and 0. Oh. We turn the page and take a look at the rest of the top 20 in Northern Iowa. The Panthers, a record of 500. They are 2 and 2, and they're at number 14. That's a look at the Sports Network top 25 poll. Time now to take a look at the Gateway Football preseason poll. With 22 first place votes, it's Northern Iowa ranked number one. Then Youngstown State, they got seven first place votes. Illinois State with two on display today. Southern Illinois at number four, and they're undefeated this season. Western Kentucky with a first place vote. Then Western Illinois, Missouri State, and Indiana State rounding out the Gateway Conference. Salukis of Southern Illinois with a lead of 7-0. Why the dogs? Well, the Saluki is an Egyptian dog. So we got the dogs here for uh, homecoming. Yes, we do. Literally. That's right. They're here. Man in motion. Third down and nine. The false fires and completes it. The catch is made by Marco Thomas, the senior. And they're now three of three in third down efficiency. And that's a great throw and catch by LaFalse to his favorite target, Marco Thomas. He does, he's done a great job in his four years here of making big play after big play, gaining the first down in that last pass. So Marco Thomas, the reception, first down. Good drive here for Western Illinois. Warzinski, the man in motion, the tight end, and the handoff to Donaldson across the 20 and brought down inside the 15. Big hole made by that line of the Leathernecks doing an excellent job opening. And, and with a big guy like that and how fast he is in Donaldson, you don't need much. You just need a crease, and he's able to hit it. And watch this burst through the hole, getting his shoulders down and falling forward. Anytime you see a running back that can fall forward, he's going to get an extra two or three yards every time he touches the ball. Tackle was made by the strong safety, A.J. Wallace. Second down and four. Donaldson again. Brought down near the 10. And the tackle again made by uh, pra Patrick Jordan, the uh, senior from Germantown, Tennessee. That's what you want to have as linebacker. String that ball towards the sideline. Get around those big running backs' ankles. Corral them with two and three tacklers and make them pay for those yards. You just can't give up anything free. It's third down and one. They're going to come out and measure and see if they picked up the first down. Thus far, they're three of three in these uh, third down conversions. If we need another one here, let's see. Just a little bit short, but a foot and a half short. 3:43 to play here in our first quarter. And, the, and if the Leathernecks can capitalize on this drive, I think it's a great win for Coach Patterson and his offense. He realizes the strength of the Saluki offense is if you can suck up a lot of clock in the process of scoring, you're putting yourself in a great position to be successful throughout this game. You can't allow that Saluki team to get on the, on the field. Just like last week against Western Kentucky, they just kept scoring quickly and kept bouncing back and forth like a ping pong ball. Next thing you know, they were down by three with 35 seconds left and just couldn't capitalize to win the game. So keeping them, keeping Nick, Nick Hill on the sideline and R.P. Whitlock is the best defense for this Western Illinois team. Third down, about a foot and a half to go for the false in this offense in their first drive. Wozinski, the man in motion. And uh, Donaldson. Lunges forward. The second effort looks like he got the first down. Way to plug the hole by this defense of the Salukis, but the great balance by Donaldson got him the first down at that point. Jordan the stop for the Salukis. 
That little extra, that little extra push with his knee almost down on the ground, actually with his butt almost hitting the ground, he gets that little extra push at the end and is able to get the first down. Great job of running throughout this whole drive. They started this drive on their 20-yard line and they're moving down the field at a great pace. Shotgun for the false with Donaldson in the backfield with him. Hand off to him. Cuts it up. Brought down near the five. Just over three minutes to play first quarter. Western Illinois coming off a loss at Western Kentucky, and this is wrapping up a three-game road trip for them at Northern Colorado, at Western Kentucky, and then today against Southern Illinois. They started their season against a Moorhead State, then they played at Wisconsin, and the Falls had one of his roughest afternoons. They had three interceptions in that game, and they lost it 34 to 10. And those are his only three interceptions of the year, and it's it's interesting because Coach Patterson, Wisconsin game, uh, the head coach of Wisconsin, is a former player for Coach Patterson as well at Iowa. So there's a, been a lot of reunions this year for him. King with the stop. Big number 57. The defensive end out of East St. Louis. A senior. String that play outside. Don't give him that crease that you've given him early in the game. Great job making the tackle. Shedding the block and making the tackle. The four of four. Third down conversions on this drive, but it's uh, third and goal from the seven. It gets tougher plays, and tougher. Yeah. 73 yards. It's been a good drive. The false to throw the football. He's in trouble. Rolling right, still looking. And throws it out of bounds. And you can see big number 57, Micah King, is saying, Look, I'm being held. No flag on the play and some booze here at McAndrews Stadium. As you can see this play, this play is the exact same play that the Salukis ran on their touchdown pass to Braden Jones. They ran across in the backfield, looking for that, that wide receiver in the back of the end zone, but the Salukis are doing a great job watching the eyes of LaFouse, and he, and he doesn't have anywhere to throw it, and you don't want to get yourself out of field goal range, so you just throw it out the end of the end zone and leave it up to your kicker. Taylor Rowan. It's three for five in field goals this year. And a Melbourne, Florida. The kick is up. And it is good. So Western Illinois gets on the board with a field goal from Taylor Rowan. A 24-yarder. And it's seven to three. Saluki's on top. Nick Hill to Brandon Jones on a nine-yard touchdown reception that made it 7-0 Southern Illinois. Rowan with a field goal, 24-yarder, and Western Illinois gets on the board at 7-3. Dane and Hughes, Dan McLaughlin, Scott Warman with you. Homecoming weekend, McAndrews Stadium, the campus of Southern Illinois here in Carbondale. Gateway football, glad you're with us. And the kick by Rowan. Whitlock will take it in his end zone and take a knee. Salukis will have it. First and 10 from their 20, and let's check back in with Scotty Warman. All right, thanks, Dan. You know, you talked about it in the outset, how it was kind of an uncertainty with SIU Carbondale with so many guys uh, going away, a graduation, what have you, including Joel Samberski, who we'll talk to a little bit later on. You know, nine of the 11 starters left after the season. Jerry Kill did an exceptional job during the offseason retooling that defense. 14 categories heading into this weekend. SIU were on top in the conference. Seven of those, Dan, on the defensive side. Yeah, we talked about it. The uh, top 20 in three major categories the last three years, and uh, the one that stands out is total defense and where you stand right there, Danon. And uh, you know, Jerry Kill has prided himself on getting good quality kids inside this program, but uh, these kids can play a little bit too. Oh, they definitely can. And what you see is a program that really believes in the whole philosophy about defense winning games and winning championships. You see a lot of teams that can push the ball up the field with all these spread open offenses and uh, things like out of Utah where they run that spread offense. Putting a lot of points on the board is great, but if you can't stop anybody, you're not going to win very many games. Let's take a look at the uh, Gateway Conference and this is preseason all-conference performers as voted on by the local media. Bennett, Moore, and Walker, and Thomas for the Leathernecks and for the Salukis. You got Whitlock, JT Wise, so their entire backfield. 
And up front, Will Justice, Lorenzo Wims, the defensive lineman, the safety Craig Turner, and Brandon Jones, who has the uh, touchdown reception today. Also, preseason all conference. So a lot of stars out here on this field today. A lot of guys that can make some big plays on both sides of the ball. So it's going to make for a, a very exciting game. The Salukis, 4-0. They beat Lockhaven 49 to nothing to start their season. Then the biggest win in a long time for this program was at Indiana. And they've had some big wins along the way, but they won 35-28 at a Big Ten school over Indiana. Then Arkansas Pine Bluff, they blew them out. And then last weekend, 55-3 against Indiana State. Here's Whitlock. Ooh, look at that move. Arkey Whitlock. Nice move on that play by R.K. Whitlock, doing a great job of pressing the hole, recognizing the defender, and shaking him. Pretty much, I think that defender has to go back to the sideline with R.K. and get a tape job done. But <laughs> R.K. does a great job of dropping his shoulder when he needs to. But when you have space like that, you know you're going to be quicker at 5'10", 195. You make those plays happen. Danian, I mean, Southern Illinois has played so well. They've gone 44 straight weeks as a top 20 team in the Sports Network media poll. Also 41 weeks in a row ranked among the top 20. And it's in and out of the hands of the intended receiver. And he's trying to, again, hook up with Jones. This program is definitely a force to be reckoned with, not just in the Gateway Conference, but throughout the nation. I mean, to be able to win in a Big Ten school on the road against Indiana. This is the, that's the first time a team has beaten a Big Ten school from the Gateway Conference. So this team is just not some some fluke or just some some uh, rollover type of team that can win within their conference. They can they can match up with the big boys. Third and six for Nick Hill. He'll work out of the shotgun. Hill fires across the middle. There's Jones. First down and more. Across the 40 and brought down at the 43. Third reception for Jones on the afternoon. And an 18-yard pickup on the play. Big play by Jones, and this is a great job by Hill recognizing man coverage. And when you have a big target like Braden Jones, you can get the ball out to his hands. And as you can see, Bennett's in a good position, but being so big and, and, and with great hands, he's able to create a little bit of separation and still catch the ball and get upfield. 15 seconds to play here in our first quarter. Saluki's quickly to the line now. Hill hands it off to Whitlock. Brought down across the 50. That is tough to defend, those three guys in the backfield like that. Three-man eye is a very, very tough to defend with a quality running back like Whitlock. That's the end of the first quarter. The Saluki struck first with a touchdown pass. Nick Hill to his big tight end, Jones. Leathernex come back with a field goal. It's 7-3. The homecoming weekend here at McCandrew Stadium. <laughs> Gateway Conference football, the nation's best 1AA conference. This week, three teams are in the top 10 nationally, and as many as five ranked in the top 25 this season. Western Illinois and Southern Illinois on display this afternoon, the start of our second quarter. And the Salukis have the football. It's second down and two with the ball on the 48. And the handoff goes to John Randall, and he picks up the first down for Southern Illinois. John Randall, a six-foot junior out of Wichita, Kansas, his 45th touch of the season, averaging five yards per carry. And when they get down and uh, try to pound the football inside the end zone, he's one of the guys that uh, Jerry Kill will go to. He's got three touchdowns this season. So you've got a pretty talented backfield there. All-conference is Arkey Whitlock. He'll be an All-American. You've got J.T. Wise. He's all-conference. And then they come in with this man, John Randall. There is no break for this Western... Western Illinois defense, they have a lot to compete against in this backfield right here. Randall again. Tied up and then brought down by the Leathernecks defensively. And in there first was Eric Lyons, a sophomore. You see in this replay, you see a quick move 
by that defense being able to secure that hole quickly coming from the outside and get around his ankles. Once you get around a guy's ankles and you're able to slow him down, then you're just timing it so that the rest of your defense can come out and make the big tackle. You have guys that are able to get around the ball, one guy tackle, the other guy try to strip the ball, and that's how you make turnovers happen. Out of the shotgun, Nick Hill. Second down and nine. Hill to roll left. Fires and the catch is made. That's Justin Allen with the catch. A junior, his seventh catch of the season. Out of Glenpool, Oklahoma. And the tackle there by Kevin Almley. And Justin Allen has done a great job throughout this year, and you'll see him utilized a lot at the quarterback position. He'll come in motion, they'll flip flop. He and Nick Hill, so they got a, a couple of little quirks to this Southern Illinois offense. That they they want to put points on the board, they want to keep your defense on the heels, and they'll mix things up just to do that. Ryan Beeler has checked in in the sidelines from uh, Southern Illinois. Matter of fact, he goes in motion. Hill from the shotgun. Takes it himself, and he's going to be wrapped up and brought down defensively by Jason Williams. Linebacker from Chicago. Good play by Williams, who was third on the team in tackles for the Leathernecks. This is the second time you saw Jason Williams make a play in the backfield by coming on that blitz play. This is a design quarterback draw that he sniffed out from the beginning, making the play for a loss. Great job by Jason. First drive for Southern Illinois was 10 plays, 64 yards. And it resulted in a touchdown. Now it looks like they get to punt it away. Fourth down and six. Revanesi is the punter. And Tim Jackson back deep to receive. He's going to let this baby bounce. And it takes a Saluki bounce. It's dead and inside the five. Great punt. Great job on the punt. Backing that Western Illinois up to their end zone, and they're going to have a long field to go. 38-yard punt. It's 7-3, Southern Illinois. Past 10 years, four different gateway teams have been to the national championship, including Northern Iowa, just a season ago. And their terrific run at the end of the season surprised a lot of folks, but we're used to seeing that here in the gateway. Ball on the two for the Leathernecks, just trying to get a little breathing room. And with the carry, it's Herb Donaldson. He picks up three on the play. Doing a great job with your backs to the end zone. That's all you want to do. You see some teams that will come out and they'll try to throw the ball on the first down. You know, I don't, I don't agree with that philosophy. I think you need to get those yards, get some positive yards, get, get away from the end zone in case something happens where you have to punt. You don't want to have your punter back there at eight yards behind. Uh, the line of scrimmage. So this is a great job of just plodding down the field, nickel and dime, taking what you can get from this West Illinois team. Hand off again to Donaldson. Sniffed out. Good play defensively by Brandon Jordan. Leads your team in tackles, and he's been on a few stops already today. Brandon Jordan is going to be playing sideline to sideline as well. He can read that. He fills the gap. Is able to make a short tackle right there. Quick guy, but uh, he is big, too. He's 5'10", 220 pounds, and uh, Brandon and Patrick Jordan, middle linebacker, outside linebackers for Southern Illinois. If you got those horses up front that'll be able to take on those blocks, you'll be able to scrape side to side like he was untouched. Third down and seven for the false. Rolls to his right. Fires man open, catch made first down just across the 15-yard line. And the catch was made by Marco Thomas, one of his favorite receivers for Western Illinois. And we saw this play earlier, same exact play to Marco Thomas, what they call 52 throwback, and where they have the receivers on the roll, rolling with the quarterback, getting it, staying in the vision of the quarterback and being able to complete the pass. One of the things about LaFosse in the backfield, he is a much better quarterback when he's outside the pocket than he is when he's just a drop back. So they want to get him out in space and allow him to make those type of plays. And run the football with Donaldson again. He's tripped up and the tackle made by uh, Chauncey Mixon. You know, Steve LaFalse a year ago was just outstanding 
against Southern Illinois. 352 yards, the most that he threw for the entire season. He had three touchdowns. He has already earned his degree in finance, and he's off to grad school at Western Illinois. An honorable mention just a season ago. Yeah, he's just a great leader out there. He's been here for a long time, and, he, and he's done a great job at the helm. So, I mean, that's the type of quarterback you want to have that makes smart plays in the backfield. As we said, he has three interceptions, but they all came in one game against a great team in Wisconsin. So he's been able to, uh, to keep himself from throwing the ball away or making bad decisions. Ooh. Intended for Thomas. A little short on the pass. The false is four of seven so far. Well, I'll tell you what, this is a little bit short throw, but it's exactly where your guy can get it and no one else can. You throw it in traffic like that, you want the ball to be in a place where your receiver is the only person on the field that can get it. Put that ball a little bit more air, or you bring it out to the side, and that ball may go back for a touchdown the other way. So that's not a bad throw by the quarterback. No interceptions in his last 66 attempts. The three INTs against Wisconsin that we've talked about. Thomas in motion. The falls to throw. It's third down and seven. Steps up. Fires. In and out of the hands of the intended receiver. Great job by the defense and Jordan. Yep. Hey, I'll tell you what, that's a great job by the defense. Being able to keep the ball in front of you, as you get depth by the linebackers, you know exactly how far the offense needs to get the first down, and you plant yourself right at, at the heels of that first down marker so you can make every play in front of you. That's a great job by Jordan. He's trying to hook up with his big fullback, J.J. Payne. So in fourth down, they'll have to punt it away. What? A flag on the play, though. They'll get away from it. Ball is still spinning, now finally touched at the 25-yard line. Let's see what the call will be. Brandon Jones got a piece of it for Southern Illinois. Great push up the middle, and that's the type of play that can swing the momentum at this type of the game. Last job uh, Saluki's had with the ball. They punted away, and they were able to stop them on defense, but things got a little bit long, a little bit... Uh, slow for them, so to be able to turn the tables, you get a big play like that from your special team. So Brandon Jones with the block, and the flag was, uh, they thought, roughing the kicker, but then obviously it's not once it was touched. So the Salukis have it with the ball on the 25-yard line. They'll have it first and 10. So special teams can play such a huge role throughout a game, and it's a big, big play here. As a former special teams guy with the Chiefs, I know for a fact that it can cause you to win and lose a lot of different games, and a lot of people take that for, for granted. They think that the special teams is a bunch of red shirts and guys that may not play a lot, but it is crucial to, to the victories or defeats of any team. First and ten when we come back. Number nine in the country, Southern Illinois, and homecoming. They lead Western Illinois 7-3. Danon Hughes, Dan McLaughlin, Scott Warman with you. First and ten. The ball on the 25. They want to throw the football. This is Hill with time. He rolls, fires, looking in zone. It's tipped and incomplete. And on the coverage, Jerome Bennett was there. That's a great job. I tell you what, this defensive backfield has done a very good job for the Western Illinois, making the plays down the field. They tried a similar play on the other end of the end zone earlier in the game, and these guys are able to tip the ball, and that's the tip drill that every defensive back works on from Pop Warner all the way up through high school and college. You tip the ball, and you give one of your teammates an opportunity to make the play, and they were just short of making a big interception in the end zone and maybe swaying this whole game. So Lukey's struck first in the first drive of the game. Jones with a nine-yard touchdown reception, then it was Western Illinois coming back with a field goal, a 24-yarder. It's 7-3, second quarter, 9.01 to go. And the Salukis want to take a timeout. Here's some other winners in the homecoming this can be a crucial play right here because uh, a lot of teams you see, and it's pretty normal throughout all of football, if you throw the ball on the first down, most teams, if they do not complete that first down, I'd say almost 95% of the time will run the ball on the second down because you don't want to get caught with another incompletion and be third and ten so you can get nickel and dime down the field with, with a short run and be third and six and be in a better position. 
Let's check First in with Scott Warman with a former Saluki. Girl Scout Troop number 198. All right, thanks, guys. With me right now, four-year starter at SIU Carbondale, now still a part of the football team, Joel Samberski. Getting a little different look, even though you're on the sidelines, right? Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I'd be considered part of the football team, but I'm doing sideline radio for, uh, you know, Mike Reese, 95-1, Magic 95-1 in Carbondale, and um, and Gene Green, and, and so we're doing, a, uh, we're getting after there on the radio, and this is brand new to me, but you know, I'm kind of winging it every Saturday, but you got to start somewhere, and uh, I'm having fun. In the last 22 years. The Carbondale Salukis have only beaten Western Illinois four times. That was during your four-year career. In fact, the first game was more memorable when you won, what, 54-52 to 52 at a shootout? Yeah, and actually, we, we, uh, they were ranked, uh, I believe, number two or three in the country at the time. And they beat us 18 straight years, one of the longest streaks in, in the country. And threw a touchdown pass in that corner of the end zone on the last play of the game to Brandon Robinson. And, and I think Coach Kill and, and believes that that's the game that turned everything around for the Salukis, and we beat them every year since. Joel, your thoughts on Coach Kill's team this year? Well, I think they're, I mean, they've proven that they're extremely athletic, uh, very, very quick, fast. I mean, they're, their defense is just, I mean, they've lost nine guys over there, and yet it seems that they haven't missed, it, missed a step. And, um, offensively, Nick Kill's doing a great job, and our key Whitlock's a stud. And, and that offensive line is a better group of guys. And um, offensively, they're moving the ball. Uh, defensively, they're shutting everybody down. And I'm just continue to, I'm amazed by what Coach Kill continues to do. Joel, thanks so much. Best of luck. Thank you very much. That's Joel Samberski, guys. Outstanding career here at Southern Illinois. Nick Hill takes over for him, the uh, quarterback. You know, Nick Hill didn't have much time to you know, get used to the starting role. He did complete 75%. Personal foul, face mask, number 22 of the defense. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. Saluki's catch a break. He did have 75% of his uh, passes completed last year, but it was just a handful of those because Simberski was a four-year starter and uh, took the majority of the snaps and was rarely injured. So it was tough for Nick Hill, with the exception of blowouts, to get some time in. Well, he doesn't seem rusty out there now. He's doing a great job leading this team. Ball on the 12, first and 10. Whitlock inside the five and going for more. Great effort from Arky Whitlock. Just when you start talking about a guy being 5'10", 195, not as big as Donaldson across the ball, he's able to make a play like this, keep those legs moving, shoulders down, trucking one, two, three, four. Five different guys, gets a little bit of help from Jones. Actually gets some more help from the West Illinois team moving close to their goal line. That's an excellent run by the running back, Arky Whitlock. Whitlock, five carries, 19 yards. Whitlock. Did he get in? He does. The second effort by Whitlock, and he gets in. It's a touchdown for Southern Illinois. Check out the resiliency by this running back, this small running back that is... By all means, probably a slasher, or most people would think he's a slasher, not going to be a power runner. Has the will to, to keep those legs moving and get past three defenders. Just in those last two runs alone, he broke about six different tackles and scored on a big play. Great job by the All-American. One-yard run by Whitlock. Coffin on to attempt the extra point. And this makes it 14-3. to three. Here in our second quarter of play. The key to that drive has to come down to the block punt by the Saluki defense. You can't allow yourselves to be pinned back, on the, especially on the defensive side of the ball, uh, in the gold zone from the beginning, from the opening part of the drive. You have to be able to allow this potent offense by the Salukis to have to go 80, 90 yards to score touchdowns. You can't give them the short field. They're going to have to do something to shore up that, that defensive side of the ball, that punt side, because this thing is going to get swayed and out of hand pretty quickly. Whitlock with the seven carries for 31 yards today. And our key is uh, one of the top players in this conference, averaging 117 per game. And that is his seventh touchdown of the season for Arky Whitlock. You don't want to allow him to get going too, 
too much today. You want to keep him sitting right there if you're a Western Illinois leather nut. Keep that guy on the bench. Get your offense on the, on the ball and, and allow them to go and suck up some of this clock because that offense for the Salukis is just way too powerful. Our key with 167 carries without a fumble. You'd love to see that from a running back, a guy that you can trust in all situations. And talking with Jerry Kill, the head coach, he says, look, this guy is a coach's dream. Blocking, receiving, running. Very unselfish, too. Well, the next down it in their own end zone, so it'll be first and 10 on the 20. And they trail 14-3 here on the road. Next week, Western Kentucky at Missouri State will be there for a gateway football coming up next Saturday. Western Kentucky at Missouri State. We hope you join us at 3 Central. Well, Whitlock is a guy, too, that uh, had to play behind some very impressive players, and uh, most notably Brandon Jacobs, who's now in the National Football League playing for the Giants. But think about Western Illinois. They've had Rodney Harrison, uh, also Eddie Hartwell. A kicker that goes on and on, too, is uh, Cyphus, the guy that... Uh, Kicked inside this conference. He's in the National Football League. Bart Scott, another one, will highlight today. But about 30 former Gateway players are in the National Football League, more than any other 1AA league. And that's a true testament to the Gateway Conference and just the quality of football here. Uh, a lot of times you think that the Michigans and Ohio States and USC's, and you have to be 1A one, one to, ha to have a chance to go into the NFL and to the next level. But you've got a lot of quality players around the nation in, in every different division. As long as you can play and, 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 and are fast or whatever the prototype that the scouts look at, you have an opportunity. There's at least a first down and more. For Western Illinois and the carry by Jebed Milton. First carry of the afternoon, and he is a load. Great job on the trap play here and getting out in space and making plays. Now, he's not going to be uh, the, the burst of speed as you see in Donaldson, but you can get downfield and be able to create big plays and get great yardage and first downs with plays like that. Great Pick job up front by that line. Pickup of 21 on the play. Under seven minutes to go, first half. We'll visit with Mario Mocha during halftime, the new athletic director here at Southern Illinois. Pick up a two on the play. Chauncey Mixon with another stop. Chauncey Mixon does an excellent job right here of shedding a block, pushing the blocker back into the running back. And that's, a, that's just another way how you can secure a hole as a defender is that not only do you fill the hole yourself, but if you have a blocker, if you can push your blocker back into the running back, that that's closes the hole as well. And he did an excellent job not only pushing back, but making the tackle as well. Just joined us. Jones, a nine-yard touchdown reception to make it 7-0. Rowan, a field goal to make it 7-3. And then Whitlock, the one-yard run for the Salukis. And they lead it 14-3. The first to throw. Fires. Oh! Oh! What a hit! A.J. Wallace. Wow. Great job by Wallace right here. Taking advantage of the vulnerable running back. You cannot put your big time running. You can't put any player in that position. Normally you see guys with alligator arms try to kind of snatch that ball out of the air and keep their eyes on the defender. Donaldson tries to keep control and try to keep concentration on the ball and he gets paid. Big hit, big time hit by the defensive back. Wallace, a junior from Virginia, the strong safety with one of the best hits of the afternoon. This crowd is alive. The false out of the shotgun with time. Steps up, throws, and the catch is made in another big hit. That time by Clayton Johnson. You do not want this game to become a hit fest like it is right now. You have to slow down the Saluki defense. Somehow, LaFaust does a great job finding a crease and finding a hole and getting the first down, but these guys are getting hung out to dry. They're not going to be able to take too many of these big hits by the Salukis. 15-yard pickup and a first down. Ball on the 40. The concentration that time by Marco Thomas with the reception. Third catch for 38 yards for Thomas.
Another stop by Brandon Jordan. Brandon, Brandon Jordan is do, doing a great job of roaming free back there, and that's just a testament to his linemen up front. Those guys are taking up blocks and opening up creases for those linebackers to shoot through and the defensive backs to shoot through and make big hits. There's, that, Coach Patterson is going to have to do something. Coach Hendrickson, as well as the offensive coordinator for Western Illinois, is going to have to do something to kind of slow this defense down, some misdirection, maybe a couple of screens to throw in there, but they cannot continue to go at this pace. Second down and nine. LaFalse will use the shotgun here. With pressure. Guns it over the middle, and the catch is made by Paul Anderson. Anderson is second catch, and it's a first down for Western Illinois. Catch of uh, 13 yards on that pickup. Big time catch by Anderson right here. And a lot of times you'll see a receiver that will go down for this ball just with his hands, fall down on the ball, and it'll be called incomplete. But that's a great job by a receiver being able to cradle the ball, secure the catch, know that you have a first down. It's a slim chance that you'll be able to catch that ball and get more yardage afterwards. So secure it and move on for the first down. LaFall, six of 11 for 69 yards. Trying to get the play in, and now a timeout is going to have to be taken with 4.31 to go first half. And the false is uh, frustrated. You can see it's homecoming today here at uh, Carbondale, McAndrew Stadium. And let's check in with our buddy Scott Warman. All right, thanks, Dan. You know, Herb Donaldson's doing a terrific job in his first year as a starter and that running back for Western Illinois. Travis Glassford had a tremendous career with the Leathernecks. He graduated like a reclamation project for Jerry Kill. Coach Patterson had to do the same thing. Eight different running backs were vying for Glassford's job. Herb Donaldson gets it, Dan. Yeah, Donaldson is from St. Louis and CBC High School. It's a private all-boys school. And at that point in high school, he was known for his defense. He was a linebacker in Western Illinois, thought he'd be a defensive player. That's not the case. He is now the uh, leading tailback for Western Illinois. 14 rushes today, 52 yards, and last time he uh, touched the football, boy, he got left out to dry from LaFalse, and that was the big hit that we saw from A.J. Wallace. He has a big hit by the Salukis, but I tell you what, Donaldson is going to give his share of pain as well. He comes down there at 220 pounds, and he's a big load, so I think Coach Patterson is uh, very happy with the selection that he made out of those eight running backs because this guy can be a true gift for the future. And right here you see the big-time hit by the Saluki defense, but he's going to get up and he's going to make them pay later in the game. So uh, you got to love that type of football. Ball on the 25. See the timeouts remaining here in the first half. Southern Illinois with two, Western with one. Man in motion is Anderson. First and ten, the false hands it off. And it's the big man again, Milton. Same trap play we saw earlier in this drive seems to work when you have a team that wants to flow very fast to the running back, especially with Donaldson in the backfield. You can get away with that misdirection with a, a, a big fullback that no one expects to run the ball. Two big gains by the fullback. Milton, his two touches have been on this drive. He's got two carries for 28 yards. There's a pickup of eight on the play. And this is a perfect position that the West Illinois team wants to be in, second and short inside the gold zone. You can't ask for more. Well, misdirection again. The pitch and a first down, near a first down. A little bit on the spot. Alex Douglas driven out of bounds, a junior from Quincy, Illinois. And you can see the recognition of this uh, Western Illinois offense. They notice that the Saluki defense is doing a lot of flowing from the first from the first movement of the quarterback and the first fake. So this is how you get a defense that's very aggressive on their heels a little bit as you do. Mix in a little misdirection, come around with the boot, get the false out of the, outside the, the pocket and allow them to make plays because if you just try to pound and pound, the speed of the Saluki defense is going to get the best of you. They did get the first down. It's first and 10 with the ball on the 15. The false out of the shotgun. Looks to throw it and tucks it. 10 5, touchdown the false. 15 yard run. The quarterback keeper for Steve LaFalse. And he picks up the touchdown. His first rushing touchdown of the season. Great play calling from the beginning of this drive by Coach Mark Hendrickson uh, for the Western Illinois team. They do an excellent job of executing 
just a, a basic quarterback draw. Like we said, you got to get this team on the heels. Salukis have made some big plays, big hits. Uh, when you make big hits like that, you start to get a little bit fast and you forget about your, your assignments and, and your gaps, and they took advantage of that. This is just about automatic. Taylor Rowan was 47 of 47 a year ago in extra points. So the sophomore puts it through, and it cuts the lead now to 14-10. As we look at the touchdown again, watch this cut block right downfield. Two cut blocks just to slow down the defense a little bit. Jordan's still able to make the tackle, but it's too late. From this angle, you can see that block right in front of you on the defensive back. Cut block downfield. It always works. You get around the legs of those defensive backs. They do not want to be touched in the knees. There's nothing worse than listening to a crying defensive back when you start cutting them around their knees. They do not like it. Fortunately for me as a wide receiver, I loved it. <laughs> Shocking. Yes. <laughs> so the false with the 15-yard run, first rushing touchdown for Steve LaFalse this year. And with that touchdown, it cuts the lead to 14-10. It is a packed house here at McAndrews Stadium on the campus of Southern Illinois in Carbondale. Homecoming, glad you're with us. Great crowd. Big Here game, we. great crowd, you're right. Anticipating one of their biggest crowds in years, and they've got it. They didn't come to see a little uh, pushover, a pushover 10 7 game. You see two quality offenses that know how to put the ball downfield. Now, it's not a, a great picture for the defense, but uh, people come out to watch score, play uh, points be put on the board. They don't want to see a, a defensive battle. Rowan will kick it away for the Leathernecks. This will be Whitlock. He'll take it at his own eight. Looking for room across the 20. Now bounces it outside, and he is tackled at the 22, maybe 23-yard line. And it's a return of 15 yards for Arkey Whitlock. So Southern Illinois with 3.28 to go. First half will have it and a four-point lead. Running those kickoffs back is totally different than being in the backfield and running from a straight set. You don't have much time to be bouncing around when you're running those kickoffs. You got guys flying down and, and, and there is no blocking scheme per se, so you just have to drop your shoulder and get downfield. There's a great job in coverage by the Leather, Leathernecks. Ball on the 23, and this is Whitlock, the All-American. Cuts it up across the 30. And brought down near first down, just short, R.K. Whitlock who came in 120 yards shy of 3,000 in his college career against Western Illinois a couple of years ago. He only had 60 yards and 10 rushes. As we mentioned, he was a backup at that time. And last year, he did not play against the Leathernecks. He was injured in that game. So this has been one of the teams he's been rather quiet against, but trying to change that today. And he's doing a, gr a great job so far. And somebody jumped across. It was he brought across? It's Kevin Dezier that went flying across the line of scrimmage for Western Illinois. I think everyone moved but the center and the ball. And now it's just a, a toss-up at this point for the referees to decide who jumped first. Offside. Defense in the neutral zone at the snap. Five yards to the lead. Still, for second down. That goes against Dazir, the defensive end out of Miami. And a little anxious. 2.36 to go, first half. And that'll give the Salukis a first down. Dazir will check out of the game. And it's amazing. As you go through the game, you, you start the game plan throughout the week. We're going to have a long count. We're going to go on three sometimes at quarterback. But as the game starts to flow along, you get back into the comfort zone or maybe going on the first or second sound. But if you can mix in something like that, you can always catch your defense offside. There's four penalties total so far in this game. Whitlock finds room across the 40. Now, for being a little guy, he's 5'10", 195 pounds. We've seen him. That's... Probably the third time where he has dragged the pile and gotten an extra yard or two with a second effort. He is a strong young man. Yes, he is, and he's a, he's a hard target to get around. He's small. He's got a lot of big guys in front of him, and he's so quick with that step, that, that little hesitation step that allows him to break open those big runs, and he's falling forward, as we talked about earlier. Running backs that fall forward are going to be much more successful. Alan Turner in motion. 
Whitlock again. He'll be brought down near the 50. That's Justin Allen with the tackle. And check that. Fuad Khalil. Fuad Khalil is doing a, doing a very good job today. He's knocked down two passes in the end zone. He's coming up. He's a number two, number three tackler on this team and one of the leaders. So he's just a young guy that's playing that free safety position, but he does an excellent job filling those holes. Uh, Columbia, Missouri. Hill out of the shotgun. They're blitzing. He fires left side, and the catch is made. And knocked out of bounds, Justin Allen. Omley with the coverage. Great job by Nick Hill getting rid of the ball. You recognize the, the, the pressure that's coming up from the defense. The defense knows that you don't have the passing or the, the pass protection set to really get a five-step drop, so they're able to take some chances, and that corner was just about one step away from making a big knockdown or an interception, but the quarterback at the same time throws a great ball that only his receiver can catch. Pick up of two. Go forth in motion. Hill rolling left. Running and near first down. It's going to be just about a yard short of the first down. Nick Hill is a terrific athlete. He is a transfer from Western Kentucky where he only played basketball. Nick Hill was a basketball player there. Didn't even play football. Now here he is starting for Southern Illinois at the quarterback position. Very mobile guy and fearless. You got to love that type of quarterback that's willing to, to, to drop his shoulder and get downfield and make plays happen. He's smart, doesn't throw interceptions, doesn't give up the ball, and makes good choices with, with the ball in his hand. So that's the type of quarterback you want to have leading your team, especially a three-time championship team. Third down, a yard to go. Clock stopped at 119. Whitlock has the first down and more. Bounces it outside. To the 25, to the 20, and he's dragged down inside the 10. R.P. Whitlock with a pickup of 35. We knew it was only a matter of time before R.P. Whitlock would break something open. I mean, he's just a relentless type of running back that knows how to pick his holes and knows when to burst. Right here, great job up front blocking by the Saluki offensive line. Those guys are doing an excellent job in this second quarter getting their bodies on somebody, covering people up, and allowing your big-time running back a lot of space to make those big plays. He's down at the six, so first and goal from the six-yard line. Whitlock, 11 rushes, 88 yards, and he's been active on this drive. Turner in motion. Whitlock again at the five. And he's going to be just short. Stephen Moore, freshman in on the tackle. Townsend also in there. Look at the patience by R. Key Whitlock. You can't say enough about this kid. He does an excellent job pressing the hole, planting that foot, and look at the burst after the plant. No creeping, no tiptoeing. It's just a plant and go. And he's trying to punish those linebackers and defensive backs. He's not allowing them just to get easy shots on him. Well, R. Key Whitlock. Prior to coming to Southern Illinois, he is a fifth-year senior, played at Coffeyville Community College. He ran for over 1,300 yards, and Jerry Kill, of course, has a history with Coffeyville Community College, and that's where a lot of these players have come from. It's been a pipeline for Southern Illinois. Let's take a look at some other gateway action. Games going on today, Indiana State winless against Youngstown State. That's coming up along with Missouri State, Northern Iowa and Illinois State and Western Kentucky. And again, we remind you, 3 o'clock next weekend, we'll be at Missouri State. We'll see the Bears in action. 45 seconds to go. Ball is on the two. And Southern Illinois has a lead of 14-10. Not what you want, as Coach Patterson's probably thinking, to be able to go into the half. You want to be able to have a big stop here, a turnover, something to change momentum around not giving up a touchdown at the end of the half. Last week against Western Kentucky, they gave up a touchdown with 35 seconds left in the game, uh, as well as a touchdown right before the half as well. So he's, he's in a situation that, unfortunately, he's used to. Play is whistled dead. And a flag on the play, too, it looked like. Timeout, Western Illinois. 
That's their third and final timeout. So no flag on the play, a timeout taken by Western Illinois. What, what was it like? Uh, we talked about it a little bit earlier. What was it like for you to play for Coach Patterson? It was, it was a great opportunity for me. I, I was a, a receiver that was uh, on Coach Patterson's staff at, at Iowa and, and had some success there, obviously. But I came there as, a, as an athlete. They recruited me as an athlete. They told me I played high school quarterback all four years, and they said you can play quarterback, receiver, or defensive back. And I got there and I said, well, I think I'm a little bit too short to play quarterback. At that time, they had Chuck Hartley, Matt Rogers, uh, a lot of quality quarterbacks there. And I said, well, I'll try this receiver thing. Never played receiver in my life before. Thought I had some good hands and, and, and a little bit of speed. And uh, Coach Patterson put me in a position to allow me to prosper, and, and I was wind up being the leading receiver for three years. So he did an excellent job. At that point, he had just taken over as offensive coordinator for Bill Snyder, who went on to K-State. So there was a huge pipeline of coaches that went through that Iowa system with the Stoops brothers and, and Snyder and, and a whole host of other guys. So Coach Patterson did an excellent job in that system and, and, and allowed me the opportunity to go for six years in the NFL. And this season, he's got this team at three and two on the ropes here with the uh, Salukis on the door of another score. Play action, looking for Wise, didn't have him. Throws back in the end zone, it's tipped. And a flag on the play. Trying to go again for the tight end, Jones. Pass interference, I believe, is the call. There was a little bit of a, a wrestling match going on in the back of the end zone with the defensive back in Jones. Once it was tipped, it's up for grabs. Dangerous there. That's going to go against the uh, Leathernecks, and let's take another look. And on the coverage was Fuad Khalil. And like we talked about earlier, he's done a great job in the gold zone. Uh, for their defense, but it, right at the back of the end zone, you can see there's a little bit of wrestling right there. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. 39 seconds to go, and they are one yard away. That's just a tough position to put you. It's an underside. I mean, that's a mismatch right there. The big tight end, Brent Jones, going against a smaller Khalil. So, I mean, he had to do something. You grab on and hold on for dear life at that point. See if Whitlock gets the call. It is Whitlock, and he is in for the score. Touchdown for Southern Illinois. The second touchdown of the afternoon. And both have been one yard runs. Great job up front. You talk about Archie Whitlock and, and the patience that he has, and, and when he gets going forward, and how he can drop his shoulders and make. Those defenders pay to try to tackle him, but look at how that hole opens up. He just basically could walk right in to the end zone. On to attempt the extra point, Craig Coffin. He bangs it through. 21-10 for 35 seconds to go in our first half. Take a look at Archie Whitlock with the touchdown. Big time play. Normally you might put a bigger guy in. They used to have Brandon Jacobs here, who's a huge running back for the Giants now. And they have Randall also on the backfield, who's a little bit bigger. But I tell you what, with his ball security by Whitlock and, and the way he runs the ball, keep him in in every gold zone opportunity because he's going to get the job done. He has today. Already almost at 100 yards here in the first half. 93, a couple of touchdowns and 13 rushes for Arky Whitlock. The Salukis, after they finish up homecoming this afternoon, they will be at Illinois State next weekend. And for Western Illinois, after hooking up here at Southern Illinois, they uh, play at home. Uh, uh, at home, they'll play host to Youngstown State, so this wraps up a three-game road trip for them. 11-point lead for the Salukis. Not a hole that you want to be in if you're a Leatherneck right now. To be on the road at homecoming against this top-shelf opponent in the Salukis, you do not want to get down too much. If they can figure out a way to get three points out of these last 35 seconds, I think they'll go in with some momentum that they can come out in the second half and maybe get things turned around. Salukis are 21 and 22 all time of the homecoming weekend. That dates back to 1963. 
We're down it again. It'll be first and ten from the 20 for the Leathernecks with 28 seconds to play. Matter of fact, the Salukis have hosted Western Illinois seven times as part of homecoming. They're one in six in those games, but uh, the Salukis have won on homecoming in each of the last five years. In fact, the Dogs' last homecoming loss was to the Leathernecks, 42-17 back in 2000. So the court is ready. We're just about there for halftime. The homecoming king in his court. I think he just likes wearing that big gown. I think so, too. <laughs> Duffy, a senior, goes in motion. The false will throw. And it is picked off. No. Just in and out of the hands of the defender. And Colburn was over there. Or Marshall Thomas. They're taking a chance there, putting it up with just six seconds to go. Yeah, it's not a, not a very smart play and not a very smart throw by LaFalce, one of few that he'll have today or he has in his career. You just don't want to put yourself backed up in that type of position where the Saluki team can maybe squeeze out a long field goal at the end of the half. Exactly. Now, the role was reversed last week against Western Kentucky where Coach Patterson spoke with him earlier, and he talked about being up 21-10 and kneeling at the end of the half last week. So he's probably thinking that about that in the back of his mind. He'll run the football here, and that runs the clock down to zero. And our first half is through. Homecoming weekend, and it's 21-10. Salukis with the lead here at half at McAndrews Stadium on the campus of Southern Illinois. Scott Warman, our sideline reporter, will catch up with Jerry Kill momentarily. As Southern Illinois in their first possession struck first. And they lead it by 11. Let's check in with Scott. All right, thanks, Coach. You're up by 11 at the half. Special teams, that big bl uh, block punt was uh, big for you guys. Well, no question about that. You know, uh, we haven't had a lot of offensive possessions. The block punt was a big, big turnaround in the game. And the uh, big thing we got to do is get off on third down. You know, their third down conversions are killing us right now. And uh, that's why we're where we're at. But uh, we just got to continue to take care of the football and hopefully come out and play a good second half. Coach, thanks. Best of luck in the second half. Thank you very much. Dan, back to you. All right, Scott, third down efficiency for West. Illinois, they're six of eight. Saluki's not bad either. They're four of five, and they have a lead after the first half of play. Halftime show coming up. Mario Mocha, athletic director here at Southern Illinois, will be one of our guests. We'll break down the first half when we come back. It's 21-10 Saluki's. Number nine in the country, Southern Illinois, with a lead of 11, 21-10. We're at halftime, and the homecoming court is here. Arky Whitlock with a big first half, 13 carries, 93 yards, couple of touchdowns. Nick Hill, the quarterback for the Salukis, was 5 of 8, no interceptions. Jones, the big tight end with a touchdown reception. That got things going for Southern Illinois in their first possession of the ballgame. And Steve LaFalse, the quarterback for Western Illinois, was 6 of 12. No INTs as well. So we're at halftime. Gateway Football Conference, Southern Illinois, a lead of 11 against Western Illinois. Halftime, and it's 21-10, Southern Illinois, the number nine team in the country. Gateway Football this afternoon here in Carbondale. And uh, Mr. Hughes, it was a good first half for Southern Illinois, but uh, Western Illinois has a chance to, to make this thing interesting simply for the fact they were able to move the football pretty well. Yeah, they did an excellent job. Steve LaFouse on, on the offensive side did an excellent job moving the ball downfield, throwing and running. He's able to hit his, his, his receivers outside the pocket, which is the strength that Coach Patterson said he had, and also it's staying in the pocket and hitting Thomas downfield. He has 69 yards passing in this first half and he's able to, to get the quarterback draw right here for the quick, quick touchdown to bring it to 10 points but they're still behind and they still have to do something about solidifying that defense against Arkey Whitlock. Yeah that's the, the other side of the football is the story when you talk about the Salukis. Arkey Whitlock he is an All-American candidate outstanding career that he's had here with the Salukis. He's closing in on 4,000 total yards. 
3,000 on the ground, and boy, the second effort was a story in that first half. It definitely was. He scored two touchdowns, and those are touchdowns that he actually got hit behind the line of scrimmage and was able to keep his legs pumping and get into the end zone. You see the speed that he has on the outside, so he's a, a perfect combination of power down on the goal line and speed around the edge, but they have to be able to counter against him if the Leathernecks plan to come back in this game and try to pull out a victory. So 13 carries, 93 yards for Arky Whitlock to lead all rushers. It's homecoming here in Carbondale. Back with more in a moment. Don Patterson has his club down 21-10 here at the half. Southern Illinois, a lead of 11. And let's check in with Scott Warman. He's downstairs. Coach, you're down by 11 at the half, and a couple of penalties on the defensive end kind of progressed the possessions for SIU in that first half. That's very true, Scott. If we could just eliminate some, some penalties here in the second half, I have every reason to believe we can get back in the game. Coach, thanks so much. Good luck in the second half. My pleasure. Thanks. Let's take a look at the uh, stats after the first half of play. And we told you that uh, one of the stories was our key Whitlock, 13 carries, 93 yards. Turnovers have not been a factor, but uh, defensive plays have, in particular, that special teams play. Yeah, special teams will come into play against with this game. I mean, having a block punt in your, on your own side of the field is going to possibly prove costly for this Western Illinois team. They have to do something to shore up these special teams and be able to stop this Saluki offense. Uh, thanks to Mario Mocha, part of the halftime report as well. New athletic director here at Southern Illinois doing a great job. Got things rolling. 21-10, Salukis recap the scoring. Southern Illinois on a Jones touchdown reception. Nine yards. That would make it after the PAT, 7-0. Then Western Illinois would kick a field goal, 24-yarder, 7-3. Southern Illinois again with an Arkey Whitlock run, one yard. And then Western Illinois would come back with Steve LaFalse, a 15-yard run, a touchdown, and then Southern, right before the end of the half, a one-yard plunge by Whitlock, and that's where we stand, 21-10. We're going to have to come out with this, and it's taken at the 5 to the 10, and Western Illinois will have it first and 10 in our first possession of the second half. And we just talked about special teams and shoring up the special teams and, and not putting yourself in a bad position. And, and unfortunately, I don't know what's going on back there with the kick returners, but they've had problems fielding those kick return ball, those kickoffs all day today. Dan, I think that's the third time I've seen that. It's amazing. I mean, the kickoff is probably the easiest ball to catch. It's end over end. There is really not too much movement. It's not wind aided or anything like that. So you just got to keep your elbows together in tight and allow the ball to get into your cradle. The false was 6 of 12 in the first half for 69 yards. Touchdown run. We'll start on the ground. Herb Donaldson, and he is wrestled down. Second effort, picks up three, maybe four on the play. And on the tackle, A.J. Wallace, who had the top hit of that first half. Monster hit. Yes, A.J. Wallace and, and Jordan, the both Jordan guys down there in the linebacker positions are doing an excellent job filling. Now, Donaldson's still getting his yard. She's still pressing forward. But those linebackers are playing complete game today. Second down and six, so pick up a four on the first play. Steve LaFalse, he started all 11 games last year. He would average 291 yards a game a season ago. Honorable mention, all gateway. Terrific junior campaign. Wants to throw here. Wide open receiver, and the catch is made across the 20. And the catch made by Marco Thomas. And for Thomas, that's his fourth reception of the game. Great job getting down and digging out the ball. I love when I see receivers know how to catch the ball. And, and a lot of people may think, well, how do you not know how to catch the ball? This is a perfect example of a receiver knowing that I ain't going to get anywhere. I'm not moving upfield. I'm not getting any yards after the catch. Let me get my elbows together underneath the ball, secure it, and get the first down and live for another down. So that's a quality play by a veteran receiver. Ball on the 22, a handoff to Donaldson. Across the 25. Going to pick up a five on the play. Herb Donaldson, 220 pounder. The featured back offensively for Western Illinois. Doing a great job at the helm uh, or carrying the load for this Western Illinois team. Herb Donaldson is going to be a force. He's still only a sophomore, a young kid, big kid, fast kid. And he hasn't allowed people besides the big hit 
before on the swing pass. He hasn't allowed one person to tackle him all day. The false quickly to the right side. And another catch is made by Marco Thomas, and he has picked up a first down. It almost looked like on the catch that the knee was down, but barely kept it up, and it's a first down. Very close, and, and at that point, you have to... That's a, that's a catch right there where you know you got space to run, so you have to be a little bit careful in dropping down that low. Those are balls where you probably bend by the waist and catch them with your hands. Uh, fingertip type of catches, but you can't give those referees any opportunities to, to use a judgment call on that. That could have been costly for them. Ball on the 35, another first down. Good drive this far to start the second half for Western Illinois. This is the big fullback, Milton. Milton had uh, two carries for 29 yards in the first half, and that's been his shortest carry by far of the season, or rather of uh, this series and of the second half. Chauncey mixing in on the stop. Also, Lorenzo Wims, the Gateway All-Conference preseason selection. I think at that point, West Illinois tried to go to the well another time with that same trap play going opposite of what they did before, but there seemed like there was a mix-up in the backfield with LaFalse and the big fullback, and they weren't able to get any yards. Actually, lost two. Second and 12. LaFalse swings it out again to Thomas with a blocker. And he's going to step out of bounds. Run out of bounds here by Brandon Jordan. Also in on the stop, A.J. Wallace. What, this is a quality play. Yes, it's a great throw and catch by Thomas, but watch the play of the defensive back right there, able to keep himself in a position to make the play and move Thomas back into the into the house of pain is what I call it. You bring him back to your other 11 guys. Now, Thomas was able to bounce out, but if he didn't secure that outside position, that could have been a big gain for Thomas down the sideline. Alex Douglas has checked in the game. Third down efficiency, six of eight for Western Illinois. This is something that Jerry Kill talked about. They've got to stop, and they bring the house, but they set up a screen. And Douglas has a first down. Alex Douglas, his first touch of the second half. Throwing screen passes like that is all about timing. It's all about preparation throughout the week. Knowing when the defense is going to be in a man-to-man -man situation. What are their tendencies throughout the week in certain zones of the field? Coaches break everything down. What's part of the field? When you're in the middle of the field, first down, first and long, second and medium, third and long, when guys are playing man, and they know exactly the, the best times to throw screen passes is against man coverage. That was a pickup of nine and also a first down. Herb Donaldson, pickup of two on the play. Trevor Moen on the stop. First time we've called his name, the outside linebacker, the junior from Garrett, Indiana. Trevor does a great job here filling the gap, and this is what you want to do. You want to rally around the big running back and not allow him an opportunity to see that little bit of a crease. There, there was a crease for a little, a split second, but between Jordan and Trevor, they did an excellent job of, of basically shutting everything down. Just over 11 minutes to play, third quarter. LaFalse rolling right. Looking and... Couldn't hook up with the receiver, Paul Anderson. We used to call this play, this is a very similar play that we had at Iowa with Coach Patterson. It's called a 51 out. And it, which you had two receivers, or if you ran the outside receiver on the out and go, we would call it a 52 or 58 throwback. So you got both sides of the field in their offensive terminology. You run right, it's 51. You run left, it's 59 with that same kind of rollout pass play. If you throw the double cut or you throw it to the second guy, it becomes 52 to the right and 58 to the left. So uh, it's amazing that, you know, after 15 years, you kind of see a lot of similar plays. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it, I guess. Another third down, and he's got to be brought down. The false is sacked. Patrick Jordan on the step. And also Larry Luster. 
So finally on third down, they're able to stop them. Prior to that play, they were seven for nine in third down efficiency. Yes, this is what they, I tell you what, those are the adjustments that you make as a good quality team during halftime. You figure out what has hurt you in the first half and you make you make amends to be able to, to counter that in the second half. That's, that's a product of great coaching right there. Coffee to punt it away. Beautiful kick. Fair catch is called for. And hit one of the players. It's loose. And who picked it up? Western Illinois has got it. Unbelievable. Johnson picks it up and scores for Western Illinois. Jarrell Johnson. A fair catch was called for and hit a player. And Johnson got it in the end zone, but there is a flag on the play. I, I tell you what, there's a question as to whether Johnson actually hit the return man and knocked him off the ball. I think that's what they're uh, talking about right there. Kick catch interference on the kicking team. 15 yards, we spotted a foul. First down. What they're saying is Johnson right here nudged him a little bit, which he did. Now there's a question as to whether he was pushed into him, but that shouldn't matter because that ball hit the defender. It did not hit the punt returner. So I tell you what, that's a questionable call, and obviously Coach Patterson is very upset on the sideline, but you know that that's that's a mistake that can't happen to a quality team, but that ball actually hit your cornerback and not the return man. He did not get pushed into him. Yes, he's supposed to let him get free, but that ball hits the defender on the back of the heel. It does not hit the return man. Hit Allen Turner, not to Craig Turner. So regardless, it's going to be first and ten for the Salukis. The officials want to meet briefly again. Ball rests on the 31, and the uh, Salukis have a lead of 21 to 10. What a huge, huge penalty against Western Illinois. That takes seven off the board. Yes, that could have been a, a big turning point for this Western Illinois team. They need to have something go right for them on special teams. They had the block punt. They had the fumbled kickoff. They just haven't been able to get everything together on the special teams, but that would have been something that would have turned things around for them. R.K. Whitlock up the middle. Across the 25, or rather 35, excuse me, and brought down at the 37, it looks like. Whitlock, depending how much he got in that run, that could take him over 100 for the game. He had 93 in the first half. You know what's amazing about this Saluki offense is that you know that Whitlock is getting the ball. They'll throw the ball with Nick Hill every once in a while, but for the most part, it's going to be Whitlock right, Whitlock left, and yet they still have do a great job of producing. So he picked up seven on the play. He's at an even 100. Whitlock again. Chase down from behind, and he's going to be short of the first down. Defensively, Jason Williams with the stop. Third on the team and tackles a linebacker from Chicago. This is about the third or fourth play that we've seen Jason Williams come off the backside. They know he has the speed, and he, he obviously has the tackling ability to get upfield on those blitzes and make those plays across the field. That's the type of linebacker you want to have on your team, a guy that's going to play sideline to sideline and not just be a run stopper up the middle. Kill will work out of the shotgun with eight and a half to play. Looks for his tight end, and they've got a first down near the 50. Boy, he's a good player. That's Jones. And Jones has his fourth reception of the afternoon. His first was a touchdown reception in the first drive. This is a quick three-step drop, but what's interesting about this route and how Jones does an excellent job of creating separation is that he gets upfield, plants his foot, and then separates out. So he's always moving in the three-step drop as opposed to just running a, a, a stationary hitch route. And with a big load like that, you get him running and get the ball in his hand, you're always going to get more yardage. And a trouble in motion. Whitlock across the 50 to the 45. R.P. Whitlock. Whitlock's such a tremendous player, and you've got to wonder about 
if he'll be playing in Sundays uh, a year from now. Not a big guy. He is a 5'10", 195, but he has put up prolific numbers here at uh, Carbondale. Well, he does an excellent job. And you know what's awesome about him is when you have running backs that fall forward, I tell you what, you think about 25 rushes a game for a running back. If they can fall forward, that's one or two extra yards that they're going to get on every carry equals 50 yards. Those yards start piling up. That's why he's approaching 4,000 yards in total offense. Whitlock again spins, but brought down. And in on the stop. Aaron Miller, the junior from California, the linebacker. That's the only way you'll be able to stop a quality running back like Whitlock is get to him early. He's already shown as he, as he gets those legs moving forward fast, he's going to fall forward and he's going to gain some yards. But if you can get to him in the backfield like Miller did, then that's where you're going to be successful at, on this level neck defense. Just over seven minutes to go. Out of the shotgun, here's Nick Hill. Third down and six. Able to throw. Flush down to the pocket. Looking. Under throws the receiver. And it'll bring up fourth down. Tended for Justin Allen and uh, the coverage there. Kevin Almley. Western Illinois comes with the whole house. I think they brought about 12 guys in the middle. <laughs> Seemed like they were coming with the full blitz. Able to get outside the athletic. Nick Hill was able to get outside, just not connect downfield on the man-to-man -man coverage. Revanesi will punt it away. His second punt. And a Carroll streamer, and he's only a freshman. And Tim Jackson, who's had four returns over 25 yards this season, is back to receive for Western Illinois. He's going to let it bounce, and it takes a Saluki bounce, but no one there. And the touchback. It'll be first and 10, and a punt of 46 yards. 21-10, homecoming weekend here at Southern Illinois in Carbondale. And the home team on top by 11. 6.38 to play, third quarter, 21-10. Number nine team in the country, Southern Illinois with the lead thus far. And let's check in with Scott Warman. All right, Dan, we know SIU with that unblemished record. One of the victories, a victory over Indiana, 118. They finally got over the hump the last three years. They came close last year. They just missed on a two-point conversion against Northern Illinois. A couple of MAC teams beat them on the last play two years before that. Now they finally get over the hump, and they're unblemished as they beat Indiana earlier this season. And Coach Kill trying to continue that here in Gateway Conference play. Little trickery here over the middle, and it is almost intercepted. Almost intercepted. So is LaFalse to Thomas. And then his pass almost intercepted. And defending for the Salukis was Patrick Jordan. Now there is a flag on the play. Hey, this is a great job trying to take advantage of an opportunity of making a big play, getting the momentum shifted. A little bit of a double pass. The first pass has to be a lateral, and you throw the ball downfield. Now, the problem with the setup of this play is that everyone is flowing to your right, so they don't have very far to go to go back and try to defend the pass, which is what happened. Normally, when you see a double pass, which is what we used to throw with the Chiefs, you have that slot guy run a corner route and allow him to go away from the flow of the, the defense and not bring a guy from across the field to the flow of the defense. So uh, it was an opportune time. Obviously, the coaches saw uh, an oppor opportunity where they could probably take advantage of some mistakes by the Saluki defense, but they still got a first down out of it. So first and 10 on the 35, play action with LaFosse. Running into problems and almost picked off again by Patrick Jordan. Good defensively done by the uh, Slukies and also Clayton Johnson and Leonard in on the pressure. And it's 21 10 Southern, uh, Southern Illinois with 6.08 to go, third quarter. These linebackers are playing excellent today for the Salukis. They are moving around the field, sideline to sideline, and doing an excellent job in the pass and the run. You see Jordan getting sideline to sideline on that play, being able to pick up the receiver, and LaFosse is probably an ill-advised throw for him to be thrown off his heels into the middle of the field. That could have been a big play for the Salukis. LaFosse will keep it himself. 
And that time, Lorenzo Wims was there for the stop. Last time he did that, it was a 15-yard run and a touchdown. Yes, it was, but I tell you what, I'm, I'm impressed with the Salukis and what they, what they have done coming out of halftime. They obviously have addressed some things. Coach Kill has done an excellent job of coaching his coaches and allowing his coaches to coach his players, identifying what went wrong in the first half because they've had several plays on this defensive front that worked in the first half that are not working in the second half. Under five and a half to go third quarter. The falls from the shotgun. Looking and connecting with his number one target today, and he has been busy. That's Marco Thomas with another catch. Marco with seven catches on the day. Like you said, he is the number one target, and that's a great touch pass. You want to identify man coverage on the outside and get the playmaker the ball. Right here, great three-step slant. Yards after the catch are key. He had the first down on the catch, but being the quality player that he is, he's still able to get about another 10 yards and get themselves in a position to score some points in this game. They have to get back these 11 points. Otherwise, it's going to be a tough afternoon for them. Seven catches for 80 yards for Marco Thomas. And the handoff to the St. Louis here. Big tailback for Donaldson. The 220-pounder picks up another first down. And this pick up, this uh, play mix. Twelve on the saw, play. Exactly. And you see the play mix that's going on with Western Illinois right now. They're doing a, a great job of mixing run and pass. They threw a trick play in there. The first half was a little bit different. They came out and they were a little bit predictable. But this second half, they do a better job of mixing things up and getting these Salukis on their heels. Donald Center is 77 yards on the ground today. They go back to it. And it's almost another first down. So running between the tackles here in the last two plays, and that's been effective for Mr. Donaldson. Well, the Salukis have shown that they, ha they can run uh, east-west. Their linebackers are fast guys that run around blocks. So when, you have, when you're playing against those type of speed type of players, you have to run right at them. That's when you nullify speed is when you run straight at guys. Let's see if they mix it up with a pass here. Second down and two. You mentioned they've been mixing it up, pass and run on this ground. They stick to the ground, flag on the play. Donaldson has another first down across the 15 and diving forward towards the 12. Herb Donaldson has been averaging 110 yards on the ground a game, and he's closing in on the century mark. Defense, offsides number 96. That penalty is declined. Penalty against uh, Larry Luster. First down inside the gold zone. Let's see if they can come away with some gold or not. They cannot settle. They can't allow themselves to settle for field goals at this point. Touchdowns are the key. And they've done a great job throughout the year. We talked about last week them playing Western Kentucky scoring on five of six possessions, scoring touchdowns. They just gave up one more when they needed and missed the field goal that Western Kentucky made. Donaldson breaks through one tackle, then brought down by A.J. Wallace. Brought down at the six-yard line. Donaldson is getting chunks right now. And this is this is where having a big type, a big running back is key for any offense. A guy that's 220 pounds. When you get into the third and fourth quarter, those defensive backs just get tired of tackling the big guy. They get tired of having that shoulder driven right into their chest. This is where you can have a big running back like Donaldson come alive in the game. Donaldson again, looking for room, going nowhere. They're on the stop. King, the senior from East St. Louis. Also in there was Jameer Gaynor. Just about two and a half to go in our third quarter of play. Third down and four with the ball on the seven yard line. 
long sustained drive by the Leathernets and it, it accomplishes the, probably the number one goal for Coach Patterson and his team is to keep that powerful offense off the field. They, they allowed them to punt the ball on their offensive side so they haven't done much for the Salukis on offense this second half. And wide open through the hole and a touchdown for the big, big fullback. Javin Milton, his fourth carry of the afternoon. Again with the trap. We saw that work three times. One time it didn't work. A little bit of a mix-up in the backfield, but obviously it's a play that they've seen a weakness in the Saluki defense, and he's gotten big chunks as well in this trap play. That dude is a horse. Yes, he is. He <laughs> is big. <laughs> So rolling on to attempt the extra point. Milton is 5'10", 235 pounds, a sophomore from Houston, Texas. And he picks up his first touchdown of the year. Cuts the lead to 21-17 with 2.07 to go third quarter. So Milton, the seven-yard run, it's 21-17. Southern Illinois with the lead. Trying to angle this kick and stay away from the speedsters. It's taken at the 18. One of the up men. And a five-yard return. Rick Burgess with the return. And let's check in with Scott Warman. All right, thanks, Dan. Taylor Rowan with that extra point is tied a Western Illinois record. 72 straight and the snapper is his roommate Dan Zeller and in the hallways of the dormitory they actually practice snapping during the week that's uh, trying to get that old timey down Dan. Now that's interesting. Yes it is. <laughs> that is interesting. Now in this situation Nick Hill the quarterback and R. Key Whitlock the tailback those two are roommates too. I tell you what it's not uncommon though when you have guys that kind of have a good blend and mesh together in college at Iowa I was roommates with Matt Rogers who was my quarterback. Sure. And it helped us because there's there's a bond and there was opportunities throughout the game where when he was about to audible I, I felt like I knew what he was going to say. I knew what play, whether it was coming to me or not. I knew the adjustments. So there's a bond that is formed between football players that I think is unlike any other sport because literally you're going out every single week putting your health and your life on the line with somebody. Those are friendships and bonds that, you know, they, they, you, you just don't, those don't, you just don't lose those. They're, they're just quality type of relationships, and I still have those relationships with guys from high school, college, and the pros that'll probably last a lifetime. Let's take a look at what's uh, happening at the Gateway Conference next week. Television-wise, Western Kentucky at Missouri State and Springfield, Missouri. We'll come your way at 3 Central, Western Kentucky at Missouri State. Gateway football next weekend. Home fans have been a little disappointed here at the start of the second half for the Salukis. They lead it 21-17 under two minutes to play. Third quarter, Nick Hill will hand it off to Arkey Whitlock, his roommate across the 30 goes Arkey. He's had a, another tremendous day. Over 100 yards, a couple of touchdowns. This league is deep, and it's not just about the strength at the top. Six teams of the eight have been to the playoffs since 1999. In 2003, the Gateway had four teams in the playoffs. And, of course, Northern Iowa was in the finals just a season ago. A lot of quality football here in the Gateway Conference. Whitlock, plus it open. Oh, what a move! Down to the 40 and inside Leatherneck territory. A couple of big time moves from Arkey Whitlock. Wow, this is a top shelf run right here by Arkey Whitlock. Watch him press the hole. That little gap right there hiding behind his big lineman. And, and I feel sorry for number five on the defense because he just got shook. To pick up of 29 yards on the play. Yes. He reminds me, if you, as you look at him with the number 24 on and his running style, he reminds me of Cadillac Williams. Yeah. Certainly not the tallest guys or the biggest, but real shifty. Yes. Whitlock again. 
Looks like a pickup of five on the play. Black down to 35 seconds to go here in our third quarter. Let's see if the Salukis get one more play in. And at this point, with the way this offense is moving with R.K. Whitlock, why would you try anything else? You might run a boot in here or mix in something, mix misdirection, but if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You got some great quality runs coming from a great running back, All-American running back. You just keep the ball in your horse's hands and let him ride you to victory. And let it tick down. And we'll move to the fourth quarter. Salukis driving here at the start of the fourth quarter. Ball on the 34 of Western Illinois. When we come back, it'll be second down and five. Homecoming here in Carbondale. Salukis trying to hold on. One quarter to go. They lead at 21-17. Crowd of 13,721 at McAndrews Stadium. Homecoming here in Carbondale. The largest crowd the Jerry Kill era. So congratulations to the folks here in Carbondale. Whitlock avoids two tacklers. Across the 30 to the 25, knocked out of bounds at the 22-yard line. Arky Whitlock picks up the first down. I'll tell you what, it's amazing when a guy is a workhorse like R.K. Whitlock and even on the other side with Donaldson. You give these guys the ball early in the game and they, and they prod along, big play, short play, but it seems like in the fourth quarter there's like a, a, another bit of energy that comes along and they move a little bit faster, they're, they're moving quicker than everybody else on the field and you can see that in the type of quality running back that R.K. is. Just underway, fourth quarter. McHill hands off to Whitlock again, and he is wrapped up and thrown down by Trokan Tampo. 6'2 sophomore, part of the all-newcomer team from a year ago out of Texas. And he's a true sophomore that started for two years for them, and they have some freshmen playing, they have some young kids out there, but they expect a lot from this Tampo kid in the future. Our key Whitlock closing in on 160 yards on the day. Second down and eight. Whitlock jumping over one tackler. He jumped right over Tampo. Brought down by Fuad Khalil. And uh, Khalil in on the staff. Fuad Khalil, number five there of Western Illinois. Fearless, five foot ten, 195, and fearless. And you check out how agile he is. Not only get up in the air, you're vulnerable right there, but he still winds up falling forward and get an extra yard with, with the leg push. Third down and five for Southern Illinois. Play action. Hill fires. It is caught by his fullback J.T. Wise. His fourth catch of the season. And Wise is short of the first down. So decision time coming up here for the Salukis. Seems like they're going to elect to go for the field goal. Which would then put them up by seven points. Could make for an interesting fourth quarter. Sure could. Frank Boffin now. This is a 31-yard attempt for Craig Coffin. Kick is up, and it is good. Coffin with the 31-yarder. Seven-point lead for Southern Illinois. We return with more in a moment. 13-27 to go. Homecoming here in Carbondale. Twenty-four seventeen. The Salukis pick up the thirty-one-yard field goal, and they lead it by seven with thirteen twenty-seven to go. Coffin will kick it off. Paul Anderson is back deep to receive. Low kick, and it is kicked out of bounds. So a flag. Coffin not happy with himself. And this has been a tale of two different halves for the Saluki team. I tell you what, this, the Western Illinois team has done a better job in the second half of moving the ball and controlling this game. 
The Salukis came out strong in the beginning, 21 points in the beginning, and only three points in the second half. They really haven't moved the ball. They had the punt, and then obviously that last field goal. But Western Illinois is doing a, a better job and putting themselves in a great position to come back in this game and possibly steal a, a, a victory. It's a 24-17 lead for Southern Illinois. And back to work goes Steve LaFalse. Leo and the defense. Now he's having to watch. Torzinski in motion. The false wants to throw. Almost picked off, and it would have been six. Oh, goodness. Clayton Johnson. Wow. Almost, almost a huge costly error by the false, one that he does not make very often. Tipped, you could see there, but uh, still, even if it's not tipped, ill-advised. And I'll tell you what, the tip of the ball probably is what threw exactly. everything off. And all it takes is a little bit of a change of that ball, whether it's to spin or from the spiral to, to that type of punt look, and guys are going to drop the ball. The false wants to throw with time. Watch out now. Oh, man, he's going to be wrapped up and brought down. A flag on the play, though. Face mask. And it very well could be a face mask. Lorenzo Wims in for Southern Illinois. Blatant face mask. We've got penalty flags in the backfield. So flags in the backfield. Let's see what the call is with 12.53 to play. Personal foul, face mask, defense from the 91. Previous spot, 15 yards, first down. Lorenzo Wims. As you can see, just trying to grab for anything. A lot of times, it looks blatant. It looks like uh, you, you're trying to hurt a quarterback because a lot of times those defensive linemen, they don't get very many opportunities to hit the quarterback. So when they do see a quarterback rolling and, and trying to buy time, you know, their, their antennas go up and they want to take care of them. And at that point, you just grab for whatever you can. Elusive Le Steve LaFalse and, and just grab the face mask at that point. 15-yard penalty. First and 10, ball on the 50. And cutting back, it is Donaldson. Herb Donaldson driven back, but uh, he picks up close to a first down for Western Illinois. Donaldson has really turned into one of the fine backs of this conference. And this is a great job up front blocking, but as you can see, the Salukis have about three guys right outside. He plants that foot, drives that 220 yard, 220 frame downfield and gets nine yards. You know you don't have the speed to beat him outside. You don't need to mess with the guys outside. You're that big and that strong and that fast. You get downhill as fast as you can. Our thanks to Mike Kern for all his help. The Gateway Conference and Patty Veverito up here in the booth. 12 minutes to go, fourth quarter. Seven point lead. LaFalse wants to throw. Looking middle, and it is almost picked off by Craig Turner. Intended receiver was Marco Thomas, who's had a big day. Thomas with seven receptions. And Thomas almost had it, but uh, and again, it was almost picked off by Craig Turner. Yes, he did a great job of picking up speed, and, and that's the burst you want to have from a, a corner. Right at that point, when LaFalse, when it leaves his hands, it looks like Thomas is open, but Turner is able to close quickly and knock that ball away. Big time play from the corner. Third and one for the Leathernecks. Herb Donaldson territory, we presume. Donaldson gets the call and gets the first down. Donaldson Scott Mormon was talking about the schedule that the Salukis have played, and they're 4-0, and they're perfect, and their biggest win undoubtedly this year was against Indiana, and they beat the Big Ten school by the score of 35-28, and we heard from Mario Mocha, the new athletic director at the school, and he actually was underneath the stands in tears after the game. So emotional about such a win for Jerry Kill, and they've had such a... A good run here at Southern Illinois, and it just kind of put the exclamation point on it, too, to have a win like that. Yeah, and I can see how that game was was very emotional. They started off slow. They were down 14-0 in the first half. It was able to put things together. Donaldson breaks it outside and finally wrestled down by A.J. Wallace. And Donaldson gets it inside the 20. They're going to mark him down at the 20, and it's a pickup of 18 on the play. I'll tell you what. I don't think you're going to see 
two better running backs than you're watching today. Two guys that are different in size, but the running capabilities and their running abilities are just phenomenal. These guys keep their legs moving, and they're always getting positive yards. Donaldson and obviously Whitlock for the Salukis. This is a, a quality game for, some, for the running game and the linemen on both sides of the field. Donaldson at 127, Arkey Whitlock at 162. And flags on the play before they could get it rolling. Under 11 minutes to go in the game. First snap, full start. Offense, number 61. Five yard penalty, still first down. Bruce Sweeney, a junior from Rockford, Illinois. We definitely don't want to have those type of mistakes in the gold zone. Coach Patterson talked with Scott at halftime about eliminating those type of penalties. And when you're trying to come back from a seven-point deficit, you cannot allow yourself to, to make that type of mistake. Anderson in motion. The false. There you go. Hands it off. Alex Douglas picks up a couple. Brandon Jordan in on the stop. They go to the well one more time on that trap play to the big fullback, and unfortunately for them, it didn't work as well as it did before. So five rushes for Milton, 34 yards, and of course, uh, Douglas. In the last carry, Milton had the last touchdown for Western Illinois. As uh, Donaldson has a breather over there, he's had a big afternoon. 25 carries. The false wants to throw. Rolls left. Has a man open. Driven out of bounds. They're going to say no catch. That was Thomas. And Thomas is putting his case. He's saying, look, if I come down with the football untouched, I'm in bounds. He's saying, I'm driven out of bounds in this case. And obviously, as an ex receiver, I'm, I'm partial to this rule. But that is clearly. A catch. To yeah, me. He's got a That's case, a catch. I, I mean, you catch the ball two yards in bounds with how athletic and, and, and agile these receivers are. He's going to get all you need is one foot. Contrary to the NFL, you only need one foot in bounds in college. I think that's a bad call by the official. 13,000 plus on their feet here at McAndrews Stadium. Third down, 15. The false will work from the shotgun. Swings it out left side, and it's Douglas. Close to a first down, he got it. Alex Douglas inside the 10, and a pickup of 18. It was third down and 15, and he gets 18. And that's a great job of coaching right there, great job of play calling. You know that in a third and long situation, in their preparation, third and long, the Salukis come with pressure and run man-to-man -man coverage on the outside. You either run a screen or a swing play and allow your playmaker to make the play downfield. He goes one-on-one -on -one with a linebacker, makes him miss at the line of scrimmage, and is able to get 16 yards. First and goal with the ball on the seven. It's Douglas again. Cuts it up, spun around, and blocked down. And the tackle made by Chauncey Mixon. Chauncey Mixon has been all over the field today. He made, he laid the big hit down on Donaldson early in the game. Quality tackler. A pickup of one on the play, second and goal, with the ball on the six. And Donaldson is back in the game. Herb Donaldson has been terrific for Western Illinois. Their tailback. Donaldson with a block from Milton. Touchdown. Wow. Excellent run by Donaldson. Got a little bit of a breather. And a touchdown. And with the extra point, we're all tied up. This is a tight game, and, and you see two different teams that came out from the first half to the second half. Big time run, getting up in the air, but getting down quick, getting those shoulders still going forward, taking advantage of a great gap made by that offensive line. Rowan on to attempt the extra point. It's up, and it is good. 
So Western Illinois on the road has tied it up against the number nine team in the country. All tied up at 24. Yeah, the uh, young lady is fired up. 24 all, Western Illinois has tied it up on the road here at Carmondale and a record crowd today in the Jerry Kill era, the largest ever, over 13,000. And it's homecoming weekend, so give the Leathernecks uh, a lot of credit to come into a hostile environment and they've played very tough thus far. They have played tough, and if you ask Coach Patterson, he'd tell you. He's pretty happy being tied in the fourth quarter of this game. What is the deal with the catching the kickoff today? On both sides. I know. I, don't, I just don't understand that. I think, you know, you have guys back there that handle the ball, the DBs, the running backs, and, and the receivers, but yet they just cannot get their hands on the ball securely on these kickoffs today. So here comes Nick Hill, the guy this offense again. Marquis Whitlock as well. Whitlock is uh, 23 carries today, 162 yards, couple of touchdowns. Hill is 7 of 11. Eight and a half minutes to go. Whitlock, the ball carrier. Marquis is out of Rock Hill, South Carolina, fifth year senior. Last season, first team All-American. Had nearly 1,500 yards on the ground. It was the third most in school history. I'll tell you what, if he continues to play like he's playing now, he's going to surpass that number before this season is over. And it's a first down for the Salukis. Whitlock again. These two running backs going to be sore tomorrow. Whitlock. That's his 25th carry of the afternoon. Herb Donaldson on the other side with 26 carries. Ice tub. Yeah, Whitlock's <laughs> got a chance at uh, 200 yards today. He's over 170. Matter of fact, he's at 178. Bill wants to throw. The lefty fires. Has a man, and it's caught. Inside the 25, Alan Turner dragging tacklers down inside the 20. What an adjustment by Alan Turner. The Great job pitcher. getting to the ball. Great job running between two defenders. You know where the ball is, and you have the ability, the strength, and the speed to, to be able to get up and get the ball and take it away. 47-yard pickup on the play. The adjustment made by Alan Turner, the junior from El Paso, Illinois. He goes at six foot, 210 pounder. He's a big guy, and he made the adjustment and makes the play. Now they come back with Whitlock. Cuts it up. He's down near the 10. All of a sudden, this crowd gets right back into it. Exactly. And you wondered with a big target like Turner is, you wondered when it in this game, when he's when was he going to be able to break loose and get a big play? And it just happened right there. Game of seven. Whitlock with his 26 carry of the afternoon pushes him over 180 yards. Nick Hill is now 8 of 12 over 100 yards and a touchdown throw. Whitlock again bounces it outside. Five. Touchdown. That is great vision by Whitlock. Great job blocking up front this offensive line. You can't say enough about the offensive line, how they've handled themselves uh, up front. But Whitlock, this is all Whitlock right here to the pylon using his speed and his vision to get another six for the Salukis. Ten-yard touchdown run for R. Key Whitlock. He is a complete package. Third touchdown for R.K. Whitlock. The extra point is good. 27 carries for Whitlock. 195 yards. Scotty, what's it look like to you down there? Danny Craig Coffin uh, is just a fantastic tick kicker. You talked about him as uh, the special teams player of the week. 
uh, this past week in the Gateway Football Conference. And, you know, he's been a spectacular career here at SIU Carbondale. Last week in their victory for the Salukis, he wound up becoming the all-time leader in Carbondale history for field goals and points earlier in the season. He got a 1AA and conference record for extra points made. We want to talk about money. There's money in Craig Coffin and Jerry Kill's kick. Fifth year senior. There's a look at Craig Coffin. Cape Coral, Florida is where he calls home. And he is the uh, Gateway Conference's uh, Special Teams Player of the Week. All conference performer, a couple years in a row. 6.48 to go. 31-24. The Salukis with the lead. Some other scores to give you from around the Gateway Conference. Youngstown State all over Indiana State. Boy, the Sycamores really struggling. Winless this year, and they're trailing 20 to 3. Northern Iowa leading Missouri State. And again, we'll be at Missouri State next weekend, 3 o'clock kickoff. Springfield at 7 0 Panthers. And later tonight, Illinois State and Western Kentucky coming up in the Gateway Conference. So 6.48 to go. Saluki's back on top, 31-24. What has been a very entertaining ball game. Yes, it has. Exciting on both sides of the ball. Quality running backs. I mean, it's a pretty even game. Early on, the Leathernecks put themselves in the hole with the block punt, but they've come back strong in the second half. Paul Anderson is upended and the ball is loose, but they're going to say he's down. Woo! Check out the coverage of the Saluki kickoff coverage team. Ian Lundy with this hit. Anderson coming up, and he's spun end over end. That is a great job of coverage by the Salukis. You teach your guys on the special teams that you get faster as you get to the wedge. You don't slow down. You don't try to measure yourself. You get faster as you get downfield and get to the wedge. He did that and was able to split the seam and not even knowingly make the tackle, just be able to blow things up. And again, the fans on their feet. McAndrew Stadium. Herb Donaldson dragging the pile. Donaldson a pickup of nearly five on the play. And he's had a heck of a day of these two running backs. You know, Arkey Whitlock is at 27 carries, three touchdowns, 195 yards. Donaldson, 27 carries, over 130 yards. He's got a touchdown. Those two have gone back and forth today. It's been a fun game. Yes, it has. They've sucked up a lot of clock with the run game and utilizing the run game on both sides of the ball. The false to throw, swings it out to Thomas, makes a move, and then he gets his jersey drugged down. So Thomas, another exception. And Clayton Johnson with the, uh, the tackle. Thomas with eight catches now and 74 yards for Western Illinois. Thomas is not a big guy. He's a great target, a big-time playmaker, but he's not a big... Uh, big target for him or a big guy so he's not going to be able to break those type of tackles that's just a great job by the Saluki defensive backfield stopping the playmaker get third down here third down and three and a timeout taken by Western Illinois we'll take a timeout as well when we return it's a huge third down coming up 506 to go 31 24 Don Patterson and the Leathernecks have it third and three with 5.06 to go. Milton, the fullback, catch is made, it's a first down, maybe more. Thomas across the 35, he almost broke that. Marco Thomas with his ninth catch. I'll tell you what, with the absence of Sims today, Marco Thomas has taken the reins for this passing offense and done a great job making plays when the ball's thrown to him. That's what happens on those slant routes. A lot of times the defenders, the linebackers, or the strong safeties that come from the inside and the corners, they almost knock each other off the tackle 
And you just got to be able to keep your feet moving because you can get a lot of yards after catch. You see that with Terrell Owens and Steve Smith in the NFL. Those guys know how to make yards after catches. Milton, the big fullback going nowhere. Marco Thomas with nine catches, 97 yards. 31-24, four and a half to play. It's a loss of a yard, as a matter of fact, so second down, 11. So Lukies have kind of got the number of that trap play that they ran. They got it open early in the, in the second half for a big touchdown by Milton, but since then they haven't really got anything on that trap. The falls to throw. They set up the screen, and it brings up third down. That screen has worked today, but not that time when the crowd anticipating a big third down coming up. It's tough to run that screen into the short side of field. Uh, you got everything going against you, and there's really not a lot of real estate for the defense to get out of place. They, they're, they're standing right there. You saw a great job staying home by the Saluki defender. to work out of the shotgun, third down and 11. Douglas was open, now he fires to him. He's dancing and he's gonna be well short of the first down, brought down at the 39 yard line. That was the play that when they had third and 15, exactly. threw it out to him and he got 18 and a first down. That one just took a while to develop. Exactly, it took a while to develop, but as you saw on the defensive side, before they were in man coverage, and this time they were in zone coverage, so they brought the linebackers back to make the plays go in front of you as linebackers. You played for him. Does he go for it here? I tell you what, after last week and what happened last week in, 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 in Western Kentucky and giving up those points late in the game, I think you do go for it here. you got to play to win. You can't play to lose. This defense, unfortunately for the Western Illinois Leathernecks, has not stopped the Salukis all day today. This might be the game right here and a flag on the play. Third down efficiency today. Western Illinois, 12 of 16. This is the first time they've gone for it on fourth down. What's the call? Try the snap, false start. Offense, number 62. Five-yard penalty, still fourth down. Does it make you change now what you do? I don't think so. I think you got to go for it. You got three minutes left. Ultimately, with the clock running at two minutes, you get one. One first down and the game's pretty much over. You have not stopped Arky Whitlock all game. You got to play to win the game. Fourth and 11. The ball straps back with plenty of time. Oh, he had him right open. It would have been a first down in and out of the hands of Marco Thomas. That's the first one he has dropped all afternoon. Great job finding the hole by Marco Thomas. Unfortunately, drops the ball, takes his oh. eyes off the ball, tries to get yards upfield. You cannot do that. You got to secure the ball. And, they, and God gave you 10 good reasons why, how to catch the ball. And those are your hands, on your, your fingers. You got 10 fingers. Catch the ball with your hands. I never supported guys that caught the ball with their body and let that ball hit those shoulder pads because you never know how it's going to bounce. Now it's going to be our key Whitlock left, right, center. Whitlock cuts it up. Across the 30, and that will take our key at right around 200 yards. He's either at 199 or 200, and a timeout is taken with 2.36 to play. 31-24, Salukis with the football and the lead. West Illinois with uh, one timeout remaining, 2.36 to go, second down and four, so our key now at 200 yards on the ground, and he's close to a first down, but short. So a big, big third down coming up here for Western Illinois. It's pretty much a do-or-die situation for Western Illinois. They have to stop them with only one timeout left in the game. If they get the first down, they can pretty much run the clock down 
and the game's over. So that's their third and final timeout. We remind you, next weekend will be at uh, Springfield, Missouri, and Missouri State will play host to Western Kentucky. Gateway Football Conference will kick it off at 3 o'clock Central next weekend at Missouri State. Marco Thomas had a first down go in and out of his hands. If he makes that catch, who knows what happens, but we do know that they continue to drive. Yes, they do, and it's unfortunate for him because he had a great day, nine catches over 90 yards. He's done a great job in this passing game, but if you look back last week, and it's unfortunate for this great kid, Last week, the last play of the game against Western Kentucky was a deep pass into the end zone that some people may say he got knocked off the ball. He may have dropped it. To me, if he touches your hands, it should be caught. I call it a drop, and then right here. So you have two games in a row where your leading receiver, one of your leaders on the team for the last few years, has not come through in the clutch, and it's unfortunate for a great kid like that. Sure it is. 2.31 to go, so... This would be a huge stop if uh, West Illinois can come up with it. Whitlock in the backfield, the All-American. Wise, the fullback, gets the block. Whitlock gets the first down. Right now, the Leathernecks cannot stop the clock. They are out of timeouts. So, a gain of three yards. It's a first down for the Salukis. 2.20 to go in our football game this afternoon. Great game today. Exciting. Had it highs and lows, but riding the shoulders of R.K. Whitlock. Whitlock has not fumbled all season. And that's another factor. You talk about the end of a game like this, you know, all you're going to do is put it on the ground, make sure that he doesn't cough it up. But I tell you what, with the kicker that the Salukis have and your running back and R.K. Whitlock knowing that he doesn't fumble, how much peace of mind and how much comfort does Coach Kill have at the end of the game with these type of leaders to know that your guys are not going to mess up these type of wins or put themselves in jeopardy of, of stumbling upon a loss because of a fluke. New career high for Arky Whitlock with 209 yards. Previous was 207. 31 rushes today. And he's not done yet. Nope. Going to add to it. Here he is again. Only second time with the football. Whitlock with three touchdowns as well. Williams in on the stop for Western Illinois and a hurt player. Some of the fans booing, thinking that he's trying to stop the clock. And that's uh, Tompo who's down. Now, I can't imagine that he is, but it has been known to happen, man. I remember Marty Schottenheimer used to tell us on special teams, if we had opportunities back then, we had Derek Thomas, Neil Smith, Dale Carter, James Hasty, a lot of quality defenses, and our offense was a little bit slack. So when I would go out on punt team, being the personal protector, he would say, if we went three and out, the defense was on the field for a long period of time, we got the ball and went three and out again, he'd say, hey, Dana, lay down. And I'd go out, cover the punt, act like I got hurt, lay down, in order to give my defense sure. a little bit of time for a break. So it, there is a little bit of a strategy. It's a chess match out there sometimes, and coaches try to utilize any way necessary to give themselves uh, the upper hand. Very killed, not happy with the uh, stoppage on the clock. It's third down and seven. And now Whistle will stop it again with 59 seconds to go. And the Salukis take a timeout here. I think there was a little bit of a question as to when the play clock should have been started because there was only 12 seconds left on the play clock and they were about to run another play, which I'm sure Coach Kill is telling them right now, hey, let the clock run down to about five seconds before you snap the ball. There's no need to rush and get plays out there. So you've got to be smart about it. Salukis can hold on to this uh, lead and hold on to the game. They go to 5-0. and oh. And this was supposed to be a year that they stepped back to the pack. Three consecutive conference championships, 0-4, or rather 0-3, 0-4, and 0-5, and uh, trying to do it again here in 0-6. 
But you go to 5-0, and oh, and you got kids this age, and all of a sudden they start believing, you know what, we're pretty darn good. Exactly. And you know what this reminds me of is USC. USC loses Carson Palmer, just like the Salukis lost Joel Samberski. And they come back with a new quarterback, just like Liner, and they're able to still keep things rolling. And it's all about the leadership of the team, quality running backs. It's a mirror image of what has happened in the 1A division with USC and what these guys are able to do down here in the one double. Put a man in motion, that's Turner. Whitlock again. Up the middle. Trying to bounce it outside. It looks like he's going to be short of the first down. Remember, Western Illinois cannot stop the clock. They are out of timeouts. Official timeout, Official timeout on the field as they will measure for this. Archie Whitlock peeking at the hole, knowing exactly where he needs to go, pressing the hole. And the great thing about that run, securing the ball as he's done his whole career. It's a first down. This game is over. It is a first down. Essentially, this game is done. Pretty much they can take a knee right, a knee right now, and the game is over. Hard-fought game by the Leathernecks, and couple of mistakes really cost them. The block punt, fumbled kickoff, and then obviously the drop by Marco Thomas in the last drive. And who knows, on that last drive, they may not have driven all the way downfield and scored a touchdown, but you know, you do gotta try to put yourself in a position. And there's mistakes that were made today that I know Coach Patterson is gonna address throughout this week, getting ready for his home game next week. So Lukies will go to five and oh. And the Leathernecks, as Nick Hill takes a knee, will drop to three and three. They'll return home next week. Consecutive wins for Jerry Kill. Five of them. The Salukis over Western Illinois. Talk about turning around a program. Coach Kill has done that. He is the epitome of it. Remarkable job. Coaches meet at midfield, shake hands, and that'll do it. Homecoming a success for the Salukis. Let's check in with the Scott Warman. All right, thanks, Dan. Coach, 5-0 on the season now and five straight wins against Western Illinois. Well, you know, it's just good to get out of here at the win. It was a hard-fought game. Uh, both teams played well. There wasn't turnovers. Uh, just a great football game. We were fortunate to come out on the, the, the better end of it. Another great day for Archie Whitlock, too. Yeah, he did. He's a, he's a horse, and uh, we rode him today. There's no question about that. Coach, congratulations. Continued success this season. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Dan, back to you. Scott, thanks. Jerry Kill, 5-0 and now with the Salukis. Yes, he's doing a great job of leading this team. And like you said earlier, they thought this was going to be a down year, but it doesn't look that way. When you got a horse like Archie Whitlock in the backfield and great offensive line play that can control the ball like they did in this fourth quarter, you're going to, go, you're going to come upon multiple wins, and they're putting themselves in a prime position to challenge for that championship again. Archie Whitlock, huge afternoon 33 carries 216 yards three touchdowns for the victorious Salukis our final 31-24 number nine Southern Illinois still undefeated at 5-0 next week Western Kentucky at Missouri State will come your way three o'clock this has been a presentation of the Gateway Football Conference thanks for joining us and so long from Carbondale